for only the third time in the history of this rivalry, Matty T. Blunt and Viger meet at a stadium outside the city limits of Pritchard. But that won't stop the action, the food, the fun, or the fellowship. Yeah, we're playing a game, but for the citizens of Pritchard, this is the game of the year, Blunt versus Viger. And it's headed your way as we kick off another season of the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Good evening, I'm Al Whedon, joined by Corey LeBounty. We're glad to have you with us, Corey. Both of these teams looking to get off on a better footing this season. When you look at this rivalry, how you start this season, normally in this rivalry, it used to be played at the end of the year. But when you have this game to start off a historic 2023 season, it just means more in the Battle of Pritchard. It really, really does. And right now, we can hear the drummers getting ready for our national anthem. I believe we're going to take it down to the field and take a listen to our national anthem. And there's our national anthem performed by the Viger Marching Wolfpack Band. So, Corey, it's official. We're about to kick off the Battle of Pritchard for real. Very excited about tonight's matchup. Want to thank everyone for tuning in and watching. And what you're expected to see is two robberies that were once less than five miles away from one another. And you always have mentioned brother versus brother, cousin versus cousin. Very excited about the amount of people that are showing up despite the heat that has hit us here across the country and you know you have to be diehard football fans when you're coming out and you're watching this football game in 100 degree weather and kudos to all the cheerleaders and band members and football players and coaches for enduring this tremendous heat but it just goes to show when you love football the way we do here in the south you're going to show up and show out All right we're going to check in with that bsn weather forecast as a matter of moments but Corey, we need to get into your checklist what do these teams need to do tonight to get a win absolutely viger has to lay the leopards down and what do i mean by that there has to be a sense of physicality in the Viger offensive and defensive line. And that way, they'll go ahead and wear the Leopards down. They have to eliminate turnovers. Turnovers are a huge part of what hindered the Wolfpack a year ago. And this Viger team has plenty of speed. They have to show speed in space. When they catch those bubble screens, you'll see the burst of this Viger football program. For Blunt, you have to make sure the special teams and tempo are taken care of. Coach Nelson comes in and he's put an emphasis on special teams at Blunt High School and he loves to play at a very fast tempo. You can't spot penalties. And what do I mean by that? That old dirty yellow rag. It can't oh, yeah. come out a lot if you're a Blunt opponent because what you don't want to do is get behind the sticks and self-inflict a lot of penalties. Fountain of Youth, this is a very young 
blunt football program that Coach Nelson has inherited. So we'll see if you will be served tonight for the Leopards or the experience of the Wolfpack will pay off. There's Corey's checklist. We'll check back in with that later on as the game unfolds to see if some of those things came to fruition. As this game unfolds, the weather is going to change. Now, you and I are in the broadcast booth, so it's going to be cool, but hopefully it'll try to get a little cooler. Let's check in with our third member of the crew, Kimberly Dunn, for our BSN weather forecast. Hey guys, it's great to be back this season and it is hot already. We will be starting this football game at 96 degrees, but could you expect anything else for the South? Thankfully here on the field, it's pretty shaded and there is a slight wind. So that is our saving grace tonight. And our humidity is not quite as high. We're only at 42% humidity. So hopefully that humidity will stay down. The breeze will keep blowing to keep these guys cool on this fresh, crisp field that they have tonight. I know that they're excited about that as well. All right, Kimberly, you try to stay cool down there on the field. Speaking of cool, Cora, we got to find out the real nuts and bolts of the game. It's time to check in with your threaded fasteners impact players of the game. Well, for the Viger Wolves, you have to start with the athlete, Jerry and Graham. Of course, Mr. Graham does a phenomenal job. He's a verbal commit to the University of South Alabama. We'll see him exhibit a lot of that track speed that he has been a state champion Four. We'll also mention Brandon Purifoy's name a lot tonight. He's a linebacker and defensive back. He's been leading the Wolfpack in tackles since he's become a freshman for this Wolfpack program. For the Blunt Leopards, you have Deshaun Duke Williams. This young man is a senior. He's following in his brother's footsteps. He can flat out fly when he gets past the line of scrimmage. And of course, Chase Howard. He's a junior defensive lineman. His brother once played on the offensive line for the Leopards a couple years ago. His brother is playing at Miles College now. So we'll see if Chase Howard can make a difference for the Leopards defensive. And we are going to find out which one of those threaded fasteners impact players of the game will be making a difference tonight. Got to thank Threaded Fatners for sponsoring the Impact Player Solutions from the ground up since 1979. As you see, the Viger Wolves getting ready to, to run out of the tunnel there, Corey, as we're back here in the broadcast booth. This is a real, real big game for the city of Pritchett. They call it the Unity in the Community game, and both of these schools have come together. Tailgating's been going on, Corey. It's been a great time. Yes, it has been hot, but I saw some folks out there in the parking lot. The festivities surrounding this game have always left me in awe, whether it was in Pritchard Stadium, whether it's in Blunt Stadium, whether it's in Viger's new home stadium. You always have the spirit of Pritchard, the city of champions that really show up and show out for these two schools. So when these two teams meet one another on the football field, you can expect 48 minutes of uh, really uh, teams not liking each other in between those four white lines, to be honest with you. After the game, that's when you'll definitely see a lot more unity in the community. But right. within those playing confines, you'll see them absolutely go to battle. And before the ball game, as we talked to both of the coaches, I'm going to say it, Corey, they were literally psyched out for this game. New coach at Maddie T. Blunt. Ramon Nelson, Ray Nelson, he's saying he wants to rebrand the Leopards. As you see him running on the field, they want a whiteout today as they're kind of trying to take over the home game. And here come the mighty Wolfpack of Viger as they take to the field. And Al, you'll notice the Viger Wolves come out with black That's jerseys. Right. And they have the green numerals. And you, you know, black resembles a funeral. <laughs> We'll see if it is a quick death of Blunt this evening or whether they'll go ahead and reverse that trend at Maddie T. Blunt to where you'll have the reverse funeral and it'll make a lot of the Blunt, Maddie T. Blunt Leopards fan extremely happy. That is something Coach Marcus Cook told us before the game. I thought it was going to be green. He said, hey, you know what you wear to a funeral, Al. You wear black. <laughs> so uh, the Viger Wolves out with their black. Look, we're having a great time. The kickoff is headed your way. Don't you move. We're less than 90 seconds away from Blunt versus Viger, the Battle of Pritchard. We'll take a break and be right back. That missing two days of school per month has a negative effect on student achievement and that chronic absenteeism is negatively impacting one out of every 10 Alabama students. Studies show students who are chronically absent are more likely to drop out of school. For every one day your child is absent from school, it takes three days for them to catch up. 
So if I am not sick, make sure I'm at school because missing school means missing out. I'm Keith Blackwood, your Mobile County District Attorney. I want to remind you about the truancy laws. Five unexcused absences requires you to attend the early warning truancy program. Failure to attend the early warning truancy program can cause you to appear before a judge in circuit court. We need you to stay in school. This is a serious law and it needs to be taken very seriously. I wish you and your family a safe, happy, and successful school year. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. And this is our first one of the season to kick it off. Viger did Blunt won the toss and declined, so Viger will be receiving the ball first here as we're getting ready for kickoff in a very odd formation. The Leopards all bunched up together there before they release. Back to receive for the Wolfpack. They have two speedsters, Carlos Benjamin and Kevin Malone. We'll talk about those two men plus others later. They were part of a four by 100 state championship relay team for us, so we'll talk about that later on. And here's the kick, a little quick kick up the middle, trying to catch the Wolves off guard, but they're gonna have some great field position as Viger takes to the field. Getting the start at quarterback tonight is athlete Jerry and Graham. Graham will also play some wide out and some defense as well. Behind his running is the rock of Ja'Cory Barnes. But before we get this lineup, a flag is on the play. So I believe we're gonna have a re-kick. It looks as if it could have been a false start by the Leopards. It's one of those special teams errors. It's a focus of Coach Nelson, and I mentioned it in the pregame as part of my checklist that it's something that Blunt really has to be worried about and concerned. And here it is right here on the opening kickoff. They're going to back themselves up five yards as they prepare to kick again. Now, a sky kick in the air being very high is something that Viger has to be aware of now. So we'll get a redo, so Miss Diane, get ready with that uh, starting lineup graphic again. We'll get it back on. And now the Leopards are gonna spread it out for a traditional kickoff. Looking quite nice in the white uniforms. It reminds me of the Minnesota Vikings on the road a bit. And they're gonna go with the onside kick. One of the up guys catches it for the Wolves. So it's gonna be great field position for Viger. Now we'll get that starting lineup for the Wolves. Getting that started, athlete Jerry and Graham. Graham will also play some wide out and some defense as well. Behind him running the rock is Ja'Cory Barnes. Barnes is swift and hits the hole quick. Those holes are gonna be made by an offensive line that averages a whopping 300 pounds, led by Georgia commit left tackle Michael DeBose. Also look for wide out Garrett Holcomb to snag a few passes. This guy's not listed, Corey, but defensive back Kevin Malone is gonna get some touches tonight. Coach Marcus Cook told me maybe about 15 to 20 touches depending on how the ball game plays out. So first and 10 for the Wolves in Leopards territory at the 40 yard line. Graham opens up at quarterback, Al, and again, Viger just trying to establish the running game early. Hand off to Barnes up the middle, he goes as he is tackled behind the line of scrimmage, gonna take about a two yard loss. Brings up about second, maybe a one yard loss, second and 11 coming up here for the Wolfpack. Great stop by Ryan Williams from his linebacker position, coming up and filling the hole. 6'1", 200 pound sophomore. And when you look at no gain on the play. Carlos Benjamin just to the offset of Graham. Second down, they hand off to Benjamin. He gets it close to the 35 yard line. It's gonna be third down coming up for Viker. Benjamin, 5'9", 185 pound junior, just trying to make it where it's third and very manageable for offensive coordinator K.J. May in his first year with the Wolfpack. Again, last season, he was on the opposing sidelines and K.J. May, a former big time prep star here in the Mobile County Public School System. Third and five coming up here for the Wolves. Trip receivers to the top. Graham rolling out. That pass incomplete. It's gonna bring up fourth down for the Wolfpack. And 
intended for Jamez Montgomery in. You look at Graham rolling to the right, just did not put enough air underneath that football. 6'1", 175 pounds senior was the intended target on that play, and you're really in no man's land to where you might as well go ahead and roll the dice here early and go for it. Might as well. A little too far away from Malik Fremont to kick at his range is about 25 and 30 yards. We see a lot of this in high school football in no man's land, as you said. At fourth down here coming up, Graham's got a lot of time. He's going to air it out wide open in the end zone, and that is a touchdown for the Viger Wolves. They're on the board. Chris Perry hauls it in. 35-yard pass for Viger. Nice catch by Chris Perry. Had eight receptions for 57 yards a year ago. 35-yard touchdown on fourth and five for the Wolfpack, and it erupts this Wolfpack faithful here. And he just waited and waited and waited, and I tell you, another second, and that ball would have been knocked away, but a touchdown nonetheless. On for the extra point. Low snap. Kick is up, and it is good. Vigers on top, seven to nothing on their first possession. And speaking of Viger Corps, we're going to take it down to the sidelines. We have a young man who's familiar with the Viger Wolves. We're going to bring to the broadcast to you right now, Viger alumnus and former NFL pro, one and only Willie Anderson, a.k.a. Stu Meat. Willie, you got to be excited, man. Your, your Wolves just scored. Hey, thank, hey um, I really appreciate you guys. You guys saying uh, young man at 48 years old, so. <laughs> That's right, really, you are young, man. Look, we're glad to have you in town here. We know you're based out of the area, but you're a Viga alumnus. You always come back and support. And just talk about what the game means to you. What was it to play in this game as a high schooler, Willie? Actually, my last game I played for um, Blunt Viga game was 92, my senior year here at this stadium. Um, um, the first time I think Blunt ever beat us was at this stadium, 7 0. So, I'm definitely happy seeing um, my, my home team, uh, Viger High School, on top right now. But the atmosphere is great for this game. I'm really glad they did him having here at last stadium because it, it holds more, way more people and gives way more people a chance to come out and experience this uh, awesome experience. Absolutely, Willie. And I know in talking with you on Friday on my radio show, you were able to have and reminisce with the great and the legendary Ben Harris the former state championship and Alabama Sports Hall of Famer from Blunt High School. Talk to us a little bit about what that was like, just reminiscing with Coach Ben Harris. Coach Harris is a, is a legend, bro. Like, um, definitely one of the all-time best coaches in the state in the state history. Um, I think what he did from from, from start up to to, take, to taking Blunt on top of the state for, for years, I think four or five championships, maybe more, um, was a remarkable thing. And just getting a chance to know him after I left high school, like I said, well, along with Damian Craig and um, Angelo Willard, coming back home and hanging out with those guys, I, I got a chance to see all the great things that Coach Harris did for the program and for the community of Christian. Wow. Willie, we appreciate you stopping by. And speaking of unity in the community and how much this game means to, to the folks in the city of Pritchard, you're doing something that's meaning a lot to a lot of young guys trying to make their way in the game. You have a, a Lyman Academy, man. Talk about the Willie Anderson Lyman Academy. I heard you had a guy drafted in the top ten of the NFL this year. Talk about that. It's, um, I started my program up, my academy up, uh, in 2016. Um, I started because uh, my son was a receiver and a, and a quarterback in high school, and I had plenty of parents asking me for help with their kids, and I couldn't help them during the time that my son was in high school. So I started my academy up to basically help out high school, uh, middle school offensive linemen, to teach them the skills that I, I think I've learned at an early age and help them be successful on pretty much every level I played on. Um, I think offensive linemen is the toughest skill in all, of, in all of football to learn. Like I say all the time that people don't go outside and teach their sons how to block. They, they, uh, guys go outside and, and play catch and play uh, chase the quarterback. No one goes out to play blocking. So I think blocking is the skill and all football to learn. I wanted to be the chance to show these young guys that. And um, I had guys like Paris Johnson, who was number six pick in the draft last year, to right. the Cardinals. I've had Paris when he was 15 years old. So looking to do the same thing with, with uh, Michael Dubose here at Viagra. I've been knowing Michael since he was in the eighth grade and uh, a, a, a great, great offensive lineman. I think following it path to myself, a little bit of and a lot of great offensive linemen that play here at Viger High School. 
But, Willie, we appreciate you stopping by, and we know the future's going to be looking bright for Mr. Micah Debos because if he works with you, I mean, he's going to definitely take it to the next level. So, thank you for stopping by. We appreciate you coming in, and, and best God, of luck. And, and, brother, if I could vote for you for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I would vote for you. You need to be in there, Willie. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Willie Anderson, former Viga alumnus, a.k.a. Stew Me, Corey. And right now, the Leopards are kind of putting the stew meat on uh, Vigers and accelerating down the field here. Well, anytime you can get added on bonus shards with penalty yardage, it's huge. You look at a first and 10 situation now for Matty T. Blunt trying to go ahead and get on the plus side of the field. Rod Talden with throw out. It's a double pass as they're trying to connect downfield. Pass incomplete. The double pass trying to go to the receiver out deep for Blunt. Great job by Tyree Durgan. And what happens is that ball floats up just a little bit too long. The play was dialed up excellent. It was not executed from a throwing standpoint. It just fluttered a little bit too long. And because of it, the great defender was able to come and knock it away. But I love the play call because what you try to do is you try to catch the eye candy in the backfield in so many different formations that Blunt will show you. Second and 10 coming up here for the Leopards. They're going to go up the middle and stopped immediately behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. It'll take the Leopards to third down. John Lang had 69 tackles, three sacks, and five tackles for loss a year ago. Comes in from his middle linebacker position, 5'10", 190-pound senior with a big stop for the Wolfpack. And now you're looking now at third down and 12 yards to go for the Matty T. Blunt Leopards. Alden rolls out to his left, takes a slip. But Corey, I believe he had to slip because the heat was on him from Viga and Brandon Pierre for one of the threaded fasteners impact players. And he's a threaded fasteners impact player for a reason because Brandon Purifoy, again, I mentioned him having many sacks one year ago, 102 tackles. He just reads the play, stays home, and he's able to create another loss. And what we're looking at now is fourth and close to 17 yards to go for the Leopards. Todd Withers back to punt for the Leopards, setting up just inside the 12-yard line. Garrett Holcomb looking to receive this punt. Almost blocked by Viger, a line drive. Holcomb going to stay away from it. That is the wise thing to do in a situation like that. Well, what's critical right here if you're the Matty T. Blunt defense and defensive coordinator really has to make sure before his team gets on the field, Willie Bohannon and Jeffrey Dorsey are going to be talking to the guys about settling down, making sure you read your keys and you're not looking in the backfield and don't let anything get behind you. If you're able to do that, you'll have success. But what's more importantly for the Wolfpack right here is to go ahead and establish dominance. Last year, this final score was 7-0. to zero. Now you're in a situation to where you can go ahead and score an additional points here in the first quarter. And if you're Viger with 825 remaining, you want to show a lot of that speed that was mentioned at the top of the broadcast. Penalty called against the Leopards. So it'll be first down coming up here for the Wolfpack. We're going to spot the ball at about 13-yard line here for Viger. And what you're also seeing, Al, is Jerry and Graham continue to remain at quarterback, it looks like, for Viger as well, as that was something that Coach Cook definitely kept close to the vest. And, again, we <laughs> mentioned Jerry and Graham, 6'2", 190-pound senior, verbal commit to South Alabama and once we go ahead and get the chains corrected we'll be just fine and you talked about Jerry and Graham one of our threaded fasteners impact players and you can see the impact on that first drive that Viger had as he led them down the field with that big fourth down pass 35 yard touchdown pass to Chris Perry to get our scoring started early here in the contest Al Whedon Corley Bounty on the sidelines, Kimberly Dunn, as we kick off the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week, kicking our season off as they hand it off and Viger with a nice run. Let's take a look at the blunt defense. The Leopards play a base 3-4 defense, 
but will show multiple looks as Jack linebacker Javorius White will come in from the edge tonight. Up front, Chase Howard will rush from his defensive end slot on a line that averages 246 pounds. In the secondary, the Leopards are young, Corey, but they're led by senior cornerback DeAndre Roberts. The unit is long, but they do have some size for the Leopards. Good gain right there on first down for the Wolfpack, and here it is. They're going to look to run the football Running again. it once again. Up the middle they go. Just past the 20-yard line. Barnes with another carry. It's going to be third and short coming up here for the Wolfpack. Coach Marcus Cook is the play caller for the Wolves. So it's his offense pretty much make these decisions as to what's going to take place here. And you love the assistance of K.J. May, but ultimately when you're the head coach saying, look, he wanted to roll the dice on fourth down, another third down in short situation, the left side of the offensive line is really where the Wolfpack love to run the football. Third and three is the call here at Lab People Stadium. Graham under center. Hand it off up the middle. That is going to be close to a first down. I'm sorry, that was not Graham. Kelvin Brisker checks in to play quarterback. Viger has the option of using Brisker or the athlete, Jerry and Graham, as we talked about him. He may play some wide out or even some defense tonight. The kid said at media days when he goes to South Alabama, what position you want to play? He said, whatever you put me on the field, I'll do it. More importantly, the offensive line was able to pick up that first down. First and 10 now, you're looking at from their own 22. Brisker under center. Putting it on the ground, Coach Marcus Cook keeps it down there. Nice four to five yard gain by Ja'Cory Barnes. Tackled by one of our impact threaded fastener, impact players, defensive end, Chase Howard, 6'2", 235 pound junior on the stop. That was a five on five tackle right there. Five <laughs> versus five. Green and white and black versus your purple, white and gold. You have to love to see the one on one type of impact players that they make. Looks to be about second and five from our vantage point here. Lads calling it second and seven. High formation coming up here. Hand off to Carlos Benjamin. Look at the holes opening up as he went through the B gap. And that's going to move the sticks. Another Viga Wolves first down. And what you did see in front of him, Micah Dubos was able to pull back and make an explosive hole for this running Wolfpack offense. And I think clock control is going to be very important here throughout the game. We are under six minutes. It's time for our heat timeout. So let's take it down to the sidelines and check in with our third member of the crew, Kimberly Dunn. She has a special guest with her. What's going on, Kim? Hey guys, I do have a very special guest here with me tonight. It's Lieutenant Colonel Frank Barrow. It's so great to have him. He is our JROTC Director for Mobile County. Thank you for taking time to talk with us tonight. Very excited to be here with uh, this great this great classic game between Viger and Blunt. It's always a lot of fun. Yeah, so I know that you are staying very busy in our school system. And what are some new programs that you even have offered for our middle schoolers? Last year, Dr. Brackens, our Deputy Superintendent, Mr. Threadgill asked us to look at some leadership programs for our middle school. And we're under career and technical education. That's a big movement to do middle school programs. And so I was tasked with opening seven brand new leadership officer training corps programs at our schools here in Mobile County. And they're kind of dispersed, so it's got a little bit of, of the urban side, the suburbs, as well as out in the county. So we're real excited about it. We've hired seven uh, veterans of the military services, some of which are still serving in the reserves. But the program's designed to give children an opportunity in those middle schools to develop leadership skills, to develop uh, workforce skills. I've bought a lot of equipment for them. They're going to have drone equipment to work with competitively. We've bought robotics equipment for them to work competitively, they, brand new drill rifles. So it's going to be an exciting time for our program here in Mobile County. And now if parents and students want to find out more information about this program, what can they do? Where can they go? They, could call, they can actually call me. They can also go on the website and see some things. I think we may have lost the audio for Kimberly Dunn as he was wrapping it up with Lieutenant Colonel Barrow. A big run by Carlos Benjamin looks as if it's going to be negated. There's a flag at the 45-yard line. 
near the sideline of Viger, and the Boo Birds are out. Well, I will say this. You got a chance to see a little bit of the explosiveness and the speed that I mentioned in my checklist. Show speed in space. And if that didn't show you speed in space, I don't know what does. And I guarantee you'll see other track meets here. If Viger gets past the line of scrimmage, they're going to turn on the afterburners. Holding. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. So it's a spot foul. And the line of scrimmage was the 36. And it appears as if, unfortunately for the Leopards, that's at the 35 yard line. So it ate up all of that run by Benjamin. Well, a 60 plus yard run, a touchdown run negated. But I tell you what, you look again at the left side of that offensive line. You get past it, past it and you will see the speed. On the carry for the Wolves, Kevin Malone, we told you he's gonna get some touches tonight as he comes over from defense to play a little offense. Second down and about seven to go here coming up for the Wolf Pack. You could hear the air deflate out of the stadium. All the Wolf Pack faithful were quite upset with that holding call against Viger then. Well, what you'll see is once again, Viger continue to try to establish dominance and control this clock here as the first quarter in time elapses. You get past the line of scrimmage and you just chunk the yardage away and you keep that blunt defense on the field. Hand off to Malone again. I believe he is at the line of the game, which was the 46. Well, he's just shy of it, so it's going to be third and short coming up here, maybe a half a yard for Viger. Nothing new with this third and short or third down situations here. Kevin Malone, 27 rushes, 231 yards, and three touchdowns a year ago. Very explosive out of the backfield. This time they bring in Malone once again. That's three carries in the row, so Coach Marcus Cook and K.J. May, offensive coordinator, continuing to go to the well, back to back to back. That's a first down, moves to six. You want to establish and dominate the line of scrimmage, and that's what you're starting to see. Again, Kevin Malone being very successful here offensively as this drive is very time-consuming, and what you want to try to do is, if you're blunt, try to get some type of penetration and fill those gaps and not allow them, make them bounce out to the outside and not hit the initial hole. Keeping it on the ground and using that clock as well. The Wolfpack still continuing to run the ball. Carlos Benjamin on that carry for Viger. Great job by Javoris White. 6'1", 200-pound senior linebacker is able to go ahead and shoot the gap. And that's what you have to do. You have to go ahead and make that contact behind the line of scrimmage. Make sure you wrap up. Very solid tackle. Only a one-yard gain. Second down and nine yards now for Viger. Brisker still in, running the offense for the Viga Wolves. And they are still in this power eye formation. Looking to pass as he rolls out to the left. Pushed out of bounds a bit late right there by White, but no flag on the play. He gets a stare down by Kelvin Brisker like, look, man, I'm trying to get myself out, up and run out of bounds. The 6'1", 165-pound junior, a nice play call because you run, 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 and then you go ahead and you show that. Here on the instant replay, you can show the bootleg action as he rolls out, and you look him trying to give himself out being a little extracurricular touch, and then he looks at him and says, hey, man. Look, just, just, I'm trying to give myself up. Third down again. About a four-yard game right there by Brisker. So third and six coming up here for the Wolves as we're just under three minutes in the contest. I believe Coach Cook possibly may be calling a timeout as Viger comes to the sideline. And we'll take a break as well right here from the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. A teacher is one of the So 
it was an official's timeout, not a timeout used by either of the teams. Up the middle goes Biger with the handoff to Carlos Benjamin behind that offensive line, but it is not enough. He is going to be short, so it'll be fourth down here coming up for Biger. Great tackle by Ryan Williams. Again, making sure he comes from his linebacker position and fills the gap. This time, you're looking at about a fourth and five. We saw them score a touchdown earlier in the game on fourth down and five yards to go. Let's see if they decide to go ahead and go to the air. Trip receivers to the top. Brisker rolling out to his right. And dumps it off late. Pass is complete. It does appear to be enough for the first down as Dylan Jackson brings it down, but a flag on the play, and we'll see if that will be coming back or not. I think he was past the line of scrimmage. That's a, I was close. That's why I say he was close to it, and if that's the case, that's a loss of down, but it was fourth down, so it will be, it will be a ball over on downs regardless, and that appears to be the case as the offense comes off the field. There's the call right there from our Whitehead. So Brisker did having a legal pass as he was past the line of scrimmage. You know, great thought. He tried to unfake it a little bit. Include the loss of down. First down, one. Yeah, that turnover on downs right there. You just have to be a little bit more aware of where you are in that situation because you know it's fourth down. You know either to stretch out and try to go ahead and get that first down, but to go ahead and throw it to someone once you've gone past the line of scrimmage on fourth down, turnover on down, that's a big stop for this Maddie T. Blunt Leopards defense. Of course, this defense led by the front end by Willie Bohannon on the back end, Jeffrey Dorsey. This defense one year ago gave up 21.8 points per game, Al, and when you are three and seven, three and five overall in your region, this matchup right here just means more to start it off, and we'll see if Blunt is able to get things going offensively. Back on the field for their second possession, Rod Talden in an empty back set with trip receivers to the top. A total of five receivers here, so they are running it wide open. Coach Ray Nelson told us they're going to run tempo. They're going to run a lot of different multiples and up the middle with a quarterback draw. They spread him out, and Talden takes it up the middle for about a 15-yard gain. Nice play call right there by the Leopards. Outstanding call by offensive coordinator A.J. Johnson. Of course, A.J. Johnson, no stranger to blunt. You look at the five wide, and the linebackers are non-existent. You get to that second level, and you take off if you're Talden, able to pick up a huge first down. Now, one of the benefits of the empty sets is if you're Biger, you have to put a spot on Talden. Because if you don't, he'll continue to go ahead and gash you for a great yardage. And that possible spy could be one of our threaded fasteners impact players, Brandon Pierfar, who's the star position, has led the team in tackles since he's been with the school. So a timeout called right there by Coach Ray Nelson with about 92 seconds left here in the first quarter. Let's take it down to the sideline. Check in once again with Kimberly Dunn. Ways that parents can learn more information and get involved. So where can they get that information? We have some stuff online at the school district that they looked at some of the, the postings about. There's a little video you can watch about LOTC that, that the MCPSS TV made. But also they can call me at 251-221-5100. Uh, I'm happy to talk to any parent out there. That's what we're here for. And this program's open to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Very important that the parents know this counts as a PE credit. So for the student that takes this class, they're not going to miss out on getting their required physical education. And we will have physical education uh, not as part of it. And we have competition, so the kids will get a chance to go compete against their other seven programs. So lots of competitions. I've got 10 big events for them to get off campus on. So during the school day, well, they have to do well in this class. They got to be motivated to go, and uh, they'll get a chance to participate in a lot of great activities here in Mobile County. Now, for some that may be wondering, what is the difference between JROTC and the new program LOTC? It's very similar in, in that in what we are here for. A lot of people think that the, the JROTC is to recruit for the military. It is not. It is here as a citizenship program to help young people become better citizens. 
we have the same philosophy with our young people here as well, but at an earlier age, because we know that if we don't reach them sooner uh, and give them opportunities to learn about what exists out there, that they might make a, a, a decision that's not a good one. So we're, I'm very excited about it. I think the, the teachers we've hired are highly motivated. They're very professional. And all of our principals are very excited about it too. So those schools, which include Callaway, Smith, Lott, Hankins, Sims, Washington, Williamson, and Pillins. Those seven schools have the program. So if you are a parent from that, pro from that district and you want your child to participate, please contact your uh, counselor at the school and they can make a change. But it needs to be done pretty quick because we're kind of getting deep into the school year. So, But it's an exciting program. The kids, are, I had so much fun to go down and visit with them because we brought them all this equipment. And they came running up, they were so excited to see it and they helped me unload it. And, they, and I met them before last year when I talked about the program. So this is what we're all about. Everybody on this field that's w from the district is here for these children. And I'm very passionate about that. I've been very passionate about our JRTC program and now to see these young kids. And the nice thing too is in the middle school, they're still children, mm -hmm. which is refreshing to see too, because they, you know, sometimes our kids grow up too fast. And, that's, and the world is a rough place. Uh, be a child while you can be a child and, and enjoy it. But the, the opportunity to work with young people has is, is been so exciting for me. I've been doing this for 21 and a half years and I'm uh, going to retire next year. But it has been an awesome ride. And, and the teachers of Mobile County work really hard on behalf of these students. I can say that without a, without a doubt. Now, what are some of the benefits that the students can receive from enrolling in these programs? Well, one of the benefits is, like I mentioned, they can get a physical education credit. They can participate in robotics, which is not every school has that. They can participate in drone competitions. So that we're trying to plant the seed early about the types of career opportunities that exist and introduce them to STEM. You know, one of the fallacies is, is children think that they can't do these things. They can. If you give them the opportunity, particularly if it's a hands-on, where they make it, that connection between math and physics and science and how that stuff works together, and then they say, well, I got this. I understand how it works. And then they start to think about, well, maybe I want to be an engineer. Maybe I want to go work for Austro or, or, or Airbus. So that's the sort of thing that all of us need to focus on to make sure these we can have a bright future if they just plan a little bit. And so that's what we want to do is to impact on that. So we're excited about it. Yes, well, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about these amazing programs, and we look forward to hearing all of the wonderful things that this accomplishes. It's a pleasure to always be here, so thank you so much for having me. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Kimberly. We got that audio together so you can hear Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Barrow. And surprisingly, Corey, only one play had been run since Blunt got to the 40-yard line. He took back-to-back -back timeouts. So now it's actually third down and six here for the Leopards. And the heat is on. And Rod Talden sacked for a loss, and it takes Matty T. Blunt to fourth down. Great job of shooting the gap. Gregory Crosby along with Jai Lang, one from the – Weak side linebacker position, the other from the middle side linebacker position, creating a huge loss. And Talden with nowhere to go with the football and could just had to eat it. And what you're going to do is you would rather your quarterback take that sack rather than go ahead and throw in the interception or fumbling the ball away. The Leopards will now have to punt the ball away to this Wolfpack team. And we'll see here as this is getting ready to wind down the first quarter of action here at Lad People Stadium. Play clock did expire, but a flag did not come out as Garrett Holcomb fills that ball at about the 15-yard line. He gets up to the 19-yard line, and that's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter as a matter of fact. So Viger on top, 7 to nothing. an interesting first quarter. We'll come back on the other side. A flag is on the play, and we'll let you know what that penalty is. It's your time, it's your season, and you are made for more. More confidence, more style, and more bling. The Genuine Bling is here to deliver you more bling and more fashion. With new styles added daily, you can shop anytime and look fabulous. Join me, Charmaine Watson, on the $5 Frenzy every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. It's cute. It's fabulous. It's fashionable. It's $5. It's paparazzi. At 
Mobile County Public Schools. We are learning today, leading tomorrow, leading right now. Tigers on top, seven to nothing. And we're waiting to find out from the officials what is the flag on the play. We're going to get the call right here. So two penalties against the Leopards there, Corey. Illegal shift and Illegal a personal foul. And a personal foul. It is fourth down. So we're going to see what Coach Marcus Cook is going to decide to do. I believe the ball was marked at the 19-yard line. He could possibly make him re-kick it, push him back further. I would ask them to re-kick it because you didn't get much of a return did there. Not, did not. You, your, your special teams did not hold their blocks, and there were five white jerseys there from Matty T. Blunt swarming your return. And you want to make sure that if you do allow them to kick it again, that not only you allow your punt return team to go ahead and get a few steps, you want to hold those blocks there as well. Good job of Gunners for Matty T. Blunt of getting down the field and making the tackle. Foul penalty against offense. That penalty has declined. Illegal shift on the offense. That penalty is accepted. Five yards, re-kick. So Coach Cook goes with the illegal shift, pushes Matty T. Blunt back five yards. That's our second punt tonight from Todd Withers. Both of the punts have been line drive stingers right up the middle, and they have not been able to field a return for Viger. So we'll find out what's going to happen here. As the Leopards go to the sideline, now, Corey, we do know that we have heat timeouts at the first dead ball under six minutes. But with the heat being like it is now, there's the option for the officials to discretion to actually institute another timeout and, and I believe that's like what's occurring right now but so many so much discussion going on the field. we are going to the end of the quarter here as quarter number two is about to begin here at Lab People Stadium and the Battle of Pritchard all right we'll take a 30 second break and come back with the second quarter for the MCPSS high school football game of the week a teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community they impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. At Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. Hello, I'm Jordan Clark, and I'm in the Health Service Academy at John L. LaFleur Magnet High School. My future career is to be an obstetrician gynecologist. With this academy, I'm learning firsthand from people already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job really makes me want to study hard and work harder towards my career goal. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. Visit mcpss.com. We are back live at, we're back live at Lad People Stadium for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. One quarter down, score seven to nothing. Viger on top of their arrival, Matty T. Blunt. And now we will get the punt that we were expecting at the end of the first quarter. Now what you have to make sure of here is that Todrick Withers feels this punt cleanly because again, you want a good return if you're the Viger Wolves here. They're gonna go ahead and send everyone. He's able to get it away and there's no penalty flag on the play. Withers actually gets some air underneath that one. And Viger is gonna field it at the 32 yard line. So their first possession here of the second quarter. And as he fielded that punt, you want to yell fire, fire, or Peter, 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 Peter and get away from get that, that way. football. You don't want to feel that at all because if you touch it and it's knocked away, it is a live football. So Viger's coaching staff is addressing that with the young man as he comes to the sideline. But Viger's offense takes the field once again, leading 7-0 to zero here in the battle of Pritchard. And, of course, 11:49 remaining. In the second quarter of action, Viger was able to score on their opening drive on that huge fourth down conversion. That was Touchdown big. pass by Jerry and Graham. We'll big see if they're able to establish the running game. Kelvin Brisker at quarterback here for the Wolves. Fakes it, keeps it, a flag right there at the line of scrimmage in the vicinity of what we like to call holding area. 
So we'll see if that will be coming back against the Wolfpack. Good job of Blunt's defense again. Javoris White been calling his name a lot for Matty T. Blunt, 6'1", 200 pound senior, but it is right in that area of holding. So we will see if it will result in a 10 yard loss from the spot and put Viger in a first and long situation. I will say I am surprised, Corey. We haven't had very many false starts, just not too many, but we've had a lot of holding in the game so far. And it looks as if Viger is being pushed back, but we're waiting for the call from the crew here as they discuss things. Yeah, it's definitely going to be holding against the Wolfpack here. During the run, holding on the offense. That penalty is declined. Second down. So the Leopards declined the penalty because it was a three-yard loss. So it'll be second and 13 coming up here for Viger. Interesting call by Coach Ray Nelson to decline that. There's that hard count, and they're able to go ahead and get that penalty yardage right back. Get, get it back. Actually, you gained two on that one, so uh, you'll get five here. Well, that's just great job if you're paying attention by the quarterback, by the clap. I love that hard count right there because you have to have great discipline as a defensive lineman to make sure in that situation that you don't give that yardage right Take back. Take a look at the first, first quarter stats here of the ball game, they, they kind of disappeared on a score. They popped in and went away. There they are, there they are. So pretty much as you can see, just dominated by Viger there with their possession, 49 yards on the ground, 35 through the air. No turnovers for either team, but both did have some penalties. Nice run right here by Carlos Benjamin. This will be the second time him taking it to the house. And I believe this time it's gonna count for a 65 yard touchdown. Seven yards. 67 yards, Al, amazing run when you start looking at it. And I mentioned, once you get these backs in space, they have tremendous speed, and you might as well go ahead with that speed, strike up the band. And those stats that were just read off quickly change. As you can see, the Wolfpack fans are extremely happy. Extra point is up, and it is no good. So Viger on top, 13 to nothing. Let's look at this run by Carlos Benjamin. One cut, and speed kills, folks. He goes ahead and makes that house call as he outraces every Matty T. Blunt defender, puts six more on the board. What's the matter, baby? You're not feeling good? School-aged children are at a higher risk of getting and spreading germs and viruses. To help protect the spread, students are encouraged to stay home when sick. Parents, it's important for your child to remain at home at least 24 hours after they no longer have a fever of 100 degrees or higher without the use of medications. Please help us maintain a healthy learning environment. Hey Alexa, tell me about Mobile County Public Schools. With 53,000 students in 90 schools, Mobile County Public Schools equips and empowers college and career-ready graduates. Several MCPSS schools are ranked among Alabama's top 10. Yearly, graduating students earned about $110 million in college scholarships and 10,000 career credentials. MCPSS is learning today, leading tomorrow. Does that answer your question? Lab People Stadium giving you the battle of Pritchard, and right now Viger is giving it to Matty T. Blunt on top, 13 to nothing. You have to do something to counteract the speed that we've seen here, and Matty T. Blunt definitely needs to answer the bell here on this offensive possession. Kickoff taken by Tyler Pettaway, and you can see the reason why so much speed 
Carlos Benjamin, Kevin Malone, Garrett Holcomb, Jerry and Graham, those guys won the 4x100 relay championships or track and field. They are 5A state champs. And, Corey, I said it at the top of the broadcast, the speed of the skill receivers and, and position players of Viger is something else. It's unbelievable. You get past the line of scrimmage, one cut, and you may be able to be equal with him out of the starting blocks, but then you look at that all offensive speed. You call that really a four-headed monster. That's right, that's right. Sometimes Jerry and Graham is at quarterback, and you have all three of the other guys on the field being able to catch the football. But this is a very, very important drive here for Maddie T. Blunt in this offense. Dalton with the handoff up the middle. And that's going to be enough for a first down as Blunt gets out there and they put it on the ground. Charles Talden takes it to the house up to about the 41 yard line. Big run right there by the Leopards. Nice throw right there in the flat. You just change up the dynamics a little bit. You are able to pick up a first down on first down. And again, you're able to go ahead and establish at least another three downs. But I love the play call there by the offensive coordinators. First to 10 on the 41, they're going to hand it off. Duke Williams weaving his way through past the 45-yard line. One of your threaded fasteners, impact player score. And what has to happen now is this Maddie T. Blunt line really has to establish itself from a dominant standpoint. What you're hoping is that if you're a Viger player, you don't get caught looking at the scoreboard. You want to continue to remain to play like it's zero to zero. If you're blunt, you do. Matty T plays with a sense of urgency right here on this offensive possession and gets points on the board. Trip receivers to the top, second and five, just near the midfield stripe. Talton, Talton fakes the jet sweep, but we have a flag on the play. Possibly a false start because it looks like the flag came out just at the snap. So Viger just gave Maddie T. Blunt a first down. Well, if you are Maddie T. Blunt, this is exactly what the doctor ordered for keeping your defense off of the field and staying fresh on the sidelines. Your offense has an opportunity to answer this 13 to zero score that we're seeing here so far. But again, Roderick Talden, six foot, 160 pound senior, just continues to command this offense and just needs to continue to play with poise and patience. You'll get an illegal substitution yeah, called against Maddie T. Blunt. Remain, shake it down. So now the Leopards eat the five yards that they picked up. So we're back to second and five once again. So the football gods giveth and the football gods take it away, Corey. Well, if your offensive coordinators, A.J. Johnson and Marcus Douglas, of course, we know Ray Nelson, his background as a quarterback, a former quarterback in Theodore and then in Sanford and going on and have tremendous success. I think right here, the Leopards will settle in offensively and continue to pick up first downs. Bunch set receivers to the top. Oh, Viger all on top of it as they blow it up. Ja Lang in there. Wow. Man, the people outside trying to get into this game missed a hell of a tackle right there, Corey. It was wow. textbook, and that's exactly what you asked for if you're able to go ahead and wrap up by Devin Whitson. Six foot, 185 pounds, mm. sophomore. Just goes ahead and levels Duke Williams there. But again, you have to establish yourselves here at the line of scrimmage and give your receivers an opportunity to run great routes and your backs an opportunity to get out of the backfield. Four yard loss on the play. Talden's gonna haul off and throw it. Connects with Duke Williams with a little floater, but that is not enough to pick up the first down. It'll be about three yards short. Man, that was quite a tackle. Let's take a look at the replay. Just right up the A gap. Great job right here of just textbook tackle style, and that was that tackle for loss. But Duke Williams coming out of the backfield as well for the Leopards, a very versatile weapon. It's fourth down here, and Coach Nelson's going to have to really think about things here. He's going to go ahead and roll the dice out. Fourth down and five yards to go on your own 46-yard line. I wonder if he's trying to draw him off. Play clock was under five. A little toss right there out quick, but it's not enough. 
not enough for as Tyler Tucker hauls it in. He's going to be about two yards short. So it'll be ball over on downs. Blunt kind of had a drive going there, Corey, just shot themselves in the foot. What you have to realize, though, if you're Tyler Tucker, you must run that route past the sticks. You have to go ahead and make sure you know the pressure's coming on your quarterback, but you have to make sure that when you do catch that football, that when you secure it, you're beyond the first down marker. And that did not happen because of the pressure of the Viger defense. And Roderick Towden put it on the money to Tyler Tucker just a little bit too short and it's gonna be a turnover on down, so we'll see if that fourth down backfires on the Maddie T. Blunt Leopards here as we are in the second quarter of action. First to 10 at the 49. And I believe we definitely have some movement right there, a flag on the play. Let's put up the home schedule, I'm sorry, put up the schedule for Viger for this season as they are the home First team. Get the call here. Start, start. Five yard penalty on offense. Remain first down. Pushes the Wolves back five yards. Take a look at their schedule here. Next week they'll be hosting Rain, then after that hosting Citronelle on the road at Williamson. It's a nice little stretch run right here, Corey. Rain, Citronelle, Williamson, UMS Wright. They take a break. Then on the back half they have Faith Academy, LaFoy, Alberta. Then they're off and then Sydney Lanier. So Viger picking up that 10th game this year. They only played nine last year. And that could have been one of the reasons why they didn't make it into the playoff. Brisker throws it out in the flat as he catches the receiver up to back to the original line of scrimmage right there. Chris Perry hauls it in. The biggest thing for the confidence of your quarterback is to get those completions, whether they're short, whether they're long. Nice short completion to Perry, the 5'9", 180-pound senior again a year ago with eight receptions tonight with already two. There's a look at the Manatee Blunt Leopards schedule. They're on the road next week against Spanish Fourth. That's going to be a tough region game. And they're into region play after that with Robertsdale. And, of course, Baldwin County at Williamson. They'll play that here at Ladd. Hosting Sarah Land this year. Big win by uh, Sarah Land last night, Corey, over Lipscomb Academy. Very good game and at Theodore for the Leopards, and there's the rest of their schedule as we get back to the action. Up the middle, bruising with a run right there for Viger. Ja'Cory Barnes takes it up, picks up about four or five, so it's going to be third and short coming up here for the Wolfpack. Stopped by Amari Reed, the 6'1", 220-pound junior, with the stop for Maddie T. Blunt, third down, and right at three yards to go for Viger as they are still in Leopard territory. Third and two, trip receivers to the top. Brisker looks to the sideline and gets the call from Marcus Cook, KJ May, keeping it on the ground once again. Up the middle, and I believe short of the first down is Ja'Cory Barnes. And what you're looking at right here, if you're Coach Cook, you will be short right at a yard and a half. And do you decide to go with that big beef of your offensive line on the left side, Micah DuBose, Janari Barnes, Tykarius Tucker, your center, or do you decide to go ahead and flip the field and punt the football here as we're approaching six minute mark and the heat timeout on the next dead ball? And they are going for it. They bring in Carlos Benjamin. Boy, he has some burners on him as he burns it right up just over the left guard between the guard and the tackle. That's enough for a first down. That's the side to run to, Corey, with Jamari Barnes and Micah Debos. The line averages 300 pounds across the front for Viper. Well, Micah Dubose, one of the top juniors in the country, and by some services is the top junior in the country. He's already committed verbally to the Georgia Bulldogs. Again, last year graded at 96%, 51 pancakes. 548 remaining now. Time for our heat timeout. Let's take a break. Mobile County Public Schools. With 53,000 students in 90 schools, Mobile County Public Schools equips and empowers college and career ready graduates. Several MCPSS schools are ranked among Alabama's top 10. Yearly, graduating students earned about $110 million in college scholarships and 10,000 career credentials. MCPSS is learning today, leading tomorrow. Does that answer your question? Join Homeroom with Renee Phillips and find out the latest homework tips and what's happening inside the schools and classrooms 
It's Homebrew with Renee Phillips right here on the MCPSS TV network. You're here with Al Whedon, Corley Bounty, and Kimberly Dunn. And Corey, we are here with thousands upon thousands upon thousands of individuals for the Battle of Pritchard. Absolutely. I would say there are over 15,000 people easily here witnessing this tremendous Battle of Pritchard. And here it is. Again, once again, first and 10 for the Wolf Pack with 548 remaining and out. It is trouble time if you're Maddie T. Blunt and not able to come away with the stop here. And if Iger is able to find a way to continue to control this time of possession, it's going to be trouble for the Leopards. We've seen the speed of the Wolves on the ground and they continue to ground and pound against this Leopards defense. Once again, Carlos Benjamin from the 37-yard line up to the 25. That's a 12-yard gain and another Viger first down. It's almost as if Coach Cook is saying, okay, I got the lead. Now I can just kind of just take my time and ground a pound if I want to. You're going to have to stop it. And what you do is you continue to pound the left side of that offensive line, and then all of a sudden you go ahead and run a bootleg to the right side. So, again, if you're Maddie T. Blunt, you want to make sure that you focus on your keys. Don't get caught looking in the backfield. First to 10 from the 24, that power eye formation has been paying dividends for the Wolves tonight. Up man is actually Jake Lane as they toss it in the air. Wide open touchdown, Garrett Holcomb, 24 yard pitch and catch from Brisker to Holcomb. Outstanding job again. You've run left, you've run left, then all of a sudden you pass right and just missed time jump by the defensive back. Put on the money, Jaron Holcomb is able to score his first touchdown receiving. He had one receiving last year. He equaled that, the 5'9", 175-pound sophomore, putting six more on the board. And Flag here we go the with play. the holding called the against the Wolfpack. That will bring that back. The points come off the board, Corey. I will say this, Al. What I would love to happen here is to go right back to that same play within this down of series that you have offensively. Because, again, you've seen running to the left side. You can continue to pound it, but we'll see what happens here from an offensive play calling standpoint. Let's head back down to the field and check in once again with Kimberly Dunn. Hey guys, we talked a little bit about the athleticism of this Blunt and Viger, both of these teams. And one of the things that Viger is doing is making sure that they are taking care of their players this season. When I was talking to Coach Cook before the game, he said that they have really prioritized their health this year. They've really prioritized taking care of their, their bodies. So there are so many hydration stations for their players. There's nurses stations on both sides of the field making sure that everyone is staying healthy, not just the players, but also the fans. If anyone needs a drink of water, they are here to make sure that in this south heat that everyone is taken care of and everyone is staying safe. And that is really play, having an impact on this Viger team, making sure that they're staying hydrated so they're able to have those explosive plays and keep their momentum throughout the game. Thank you, Kimberly. The momentum is definitely on the side of the Wolfpack tonight. Really been, been playing keep away from Leopards, from the Leopards, of course, if we had a time of possession clock running, I'm sure it would be definitely in Viger's favor. Well, what you do now is you go ahead and continue to control that clock. Stay in bounds here, and you continue to see if the Leopards defense can respond to it defensively and rise up to the occasion as a couple of yards were gained there on that rollout by Brisker. Brisker, Brisker gets a couple of the yards back. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, one of the reasons this is our most viewed broadcast every year because we give you the halftime, and boy, what a halftime we have headed your way with Maddie T. Blunt and with Viger bringing the band. So we'll show you the entire halftime. So stick around for that coming up less than four minutes away. Third down and 15, a long 15 here for the Wolfpack as they bring the receivers out, double stack. If you're the Leopards, don't get let any of the wide receivers get behind you. You can go ahead and give them that type of cushion that you need, and but just don't let them go ahead and get past you. And a timeout call right there by Marcus Cook uses his first timeout. Let's take a look at the crowd, Corey. We alluded to it, thousands and thousands in attendance with, here, with us here tonight. One of the reasons by holding this game here at Lab People Stadium, it allows so many 
to watch the game in person. We appreciate you watching us on Facebook and YouTube and Channel 15 on Xfinity and 81 on Mediacom and 99 on Uverse. But it's nothing like experiencing the Battle of Pritchard in person. Absolutely. And when you look at this being Viger's home game, the revenue that can be drawn, even though they do have the new stadium, the revenue that can be drawn by Viger's athletic facilities and athletic staff, you do have non-revenue generating sports that have to be supported. And with a crowd like this that Viger has tonight, they can go ahead and support those non-revenue generating sports. Just saw one of the former Leopards chiming in on Facebook, Quintarius Topping, said, let's get to halftime and regroup, Blunt. We need to get back in this. So, uh, Keep those comments coming to us on Facebook and YouTube. We appreciate it and appreciate you supporting high school athletics. Al Whedon, Corley Bounty on the sideline. Kimberly Dunn, our statistician, China Powell in the house as we're kicking off the season for us here for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Corey, I know I'm getting up in age. Is this year seven or eight for us together? It is year number eight. Man. Man. We're in the booth with one another doing these MCPSS yeah. games. And every single year, the production crew has done a tremendous job finding ways to improve the broadcast. Trip receivers to the bottom of the screen. Brisker rolls out. He's going to air it out. Threw it into double coverage. Incomplete. And it may have been the best thing for that because Garrett Holcomb was surrounded by two lepers. It was a jump ball, and when you're Jared Holcomb trying to catch that football, you're only 5'9", 175 pounds. It's not like you're 6'2". Uh, the tallest tight end is DeAndre Chambers at 6'3". So, again, you wanted to try to make sure you timed your jump, and Holcomb was not able to do that here. And it'll be interesting to see if Viger decides to go ahead and go for it here on fourth down, or they decide to go ahead and give us a little pooch punt action to go ahead and try to flip the field. Viger's gonna punt. I believe this is their first punt of the game. We have a stoppage, a penalty flag at the, on the five yard line. Correction, a timeout. So coach Marcus Cook has called another timeout here for Viger, talking about the impact that coach Ray Nelson has had here as he joined the Manatee Blunt program. Blunt's numbers are up, Corey. They dressed out about 99 players. They have 17 seniors on the squad. Principal Jerome Woods told us, he said it has definitely been an uptick in participation and uptick in kids wanting to be a part of this program. One of the reasons the numbers up, they are a bit young, as Coach Nelson told us, but I haven't seen numbers like this at Blunt in a long time. No, it's very important. Again, I mentioned youth being served. It's the fountain of youth for this Blunt program, and what you've seen is the rebranding of this Maddie T. Blunt program, and Ray Nelson is a tremendous leader. Of course, his time as a head coach at Satsuma High School. They did a phenomenal job with that community. And then he goes back home to Theodore and is an assistant coach there as the Bobcats were able to win 6A Region 1 one year ago. And Matty T. Blunt, the purple and white, come calling, and he answers that call and is going to do a tremendous job building this program. I like the new uni score. I, I, I love the, the logo with the leopard, the gold leopard, the MTB on there, bringing out the purple. I will say this. I don't know if we're going to be doing a blunt homecoming game, but, but if they came out some gold jerseys, like old school back in the 60s, man, that would be you tight right there. It. Fourth down here, Viger is going to go for it instead of punting it. Brisker has plenty of time as he drills it right up the middle. And who catches it? Corey, one of your threaded, faster impact players, Jerry and Graham, First down, move the chain. And it was a tremendous throw, but look at the time Kelvin Brisker has, folks. A tremendous route run by Jerry and Graham, the 6'2", 190-pound senior. Again, a South Alabama verbal commit, but he's just an athlete. Started the game, has thrown a touchdown, and now catches a very critical fourth down. We've seen Viger go ahead and convert on fourth down twice this game. Puts the Wolfpack inside the red zone, first and 10 from the 12 yard line. They can pick up a first down without having the score. Brisker does the smart thing and just throws that one away, takes them a second down. And once again, tremendous time given by this offensive line. Look at the balance and the time that Brisker has. Plenty of pocket, the presence. He catches a streaking Graham, who's running a wonderful streaking slant route as a wide receiver. Knew where he needed to be, was able to pick up that first down. Second and 10 now for the Wolfpack. 
Last year, Viagra averaged 16.8 points on offense, and that defense only gave up 12.2 points a contest. Right now, they're knocking on the door for their average. Look at Benjamin. Cut, puts the foot in the dirt. Gets up to about the three or the four. Nice run by Carlos Benjamin. You hear the oohs and the ahs. Why do you hear the oohs and the ahs from the crowd? Because you see the tremendous footwork by 5'9", 185-pound junior. Just goes ahead and puts on the brakes and makes the defender run past him and then runs through. So we'll see exactly where that leaves Viger here. Third down and one yard to go. Micah Debos checks out of the game. He was slow getting up after that last play. So the All-American is going to step out. Third and short. They fake it. Look at Brisker with the bootleg. He's going to take it in for a three-yard score. Touchdown, Viger. Tremendous I see no flag. Call. Sorry, Corey. I see no flags. Go ahead. Tremendous call because what you've done is you've hammered, hammered, hammered the left side. You go ahead and you run that bootleg to the right. And it is just a walk in the park for Kelvin Brisker as he's able to go ahead and get in. But we do need to keep an eye on the fact that Micah Dubos did come out and he has gone underneath the tent to be attended. It looked like he was a little bit gimpy with his ankle, but we'll see here if Viger is able to convert on the point after attempt. Fremont on for the extra point, puts it up. And it is good. Scores 20 to nothing. Viger all in control. Did you know that missing two days of school per month has a negative effect on student achievement? And that chronic absenteeism is negatively impacting one out of every 10 Alabama students. Studies show students who are chronically absent are more likely to drop out of school. For every one day your child is absent from school, it takes three days for them to catch up. So if I am not sick, make sure I'm at school, because missing school means missing out. I'm Keith Blackwood, your Mobile County District Attorney. I want to remind you about the truancy laws. Five unexcused absences requires you to attend the Early Warning Truancy Program. Failure to attend the early warning truancy program can cause you to appear before a judge in circuit court. We need you to stay in school. This is a serious law, and it needs to be taken very seriously. I wish you and your family a safe, happy, and successful school year. The purpose of the Mobile County Public School System is to equip and empower college and career-ready graduates at Mobile County Public Schools. We are learning today and leading tomorrow. All in control and leading right now. Viger on top, 20 to nothing. Corley Bounty, give me your estimate here. About two minutes left in the second quarter. What has to happen here if you're Matty T. Blunt? You cannot afford. Viger doesn't have any more timeouts, so they can't stop the clock. You hope to put some type of score on the scoreboard. You don't want to go into halftime without having an opportunity to have any points. But it's important here that Matty T. continues to attack this Viger defense and not go three and out right here before the half. Little squib kick right there by the Wolves. Nice field position for the Leopards that they get it just outside of 37-yard line. Parents, don't forget, September 4th is coming up. That's the first Monday of September. Oh, that's Labor Day, Corley Bounty. So all schools and offices will be closed for the Mobile County Public School System. Don't forget, September 4th, Labor Day. No school for the kids, no work for the teachers. Enjoy your Labor Day. I guess that's the unofficial end of summer, even though it's technically not the end of summer because – when we do these games, it could be summer of October with the temps, man. Absolutely. I've never seen it this hot, but it did not yeah. stop a tremendous crowd from arriving here at Ladd People Stadium. As I would say, there's over 15,000 here watching this high school football game tonight. The Battle of Pritchard. Great amount of folks here. Talden's pass is complete to Tucker as he cuts on the slant out of his slot position past the midfield stripe. Here's that tempo Coach Ray Nelson told us about as they're lining up to snap this ball. Special teams and tempo, part of my checklist is what's important. And go ahead and you work on this two minute drill every single day in practice. And again, as the clock winds down, trailing 20 to nothing, you're in the plus side of the territory. 
Ball at the 48. Trying to set up a screen right there for Duke Williams. He gets out of bounds. That's going to stop the clock. We'll call it about a four to five yard gain for the Leopards. Second and short coming up here as they are trying to get on the board. You need to take something to the locker room, some type of momentum. Blunt will get the ball in the second half as they decline. Bunch set of receivers to the left. Talden rolls out to the left. And he is met right there. And who else, Corey, but one of your threaded, fastener, impact players, Brandon Pierrefour. I know John McKenzie is mm. watching this game. And as Coach McKenzie, the former state champion in 2020, watches that game, he knows that number right there. Brandon Pierrefoy led wow. them in tackles as a true freshman, continues to do so throughout his career, textbook style. Third and five for the Leopards as we approach under one minute. Talden on the move. Does find Tucker right there in the slot. And, man, once again, Pierrefoy, that's why he led the team in tackles year and year before. Very special, but positive yardage. And, again, executing this two-minute offense are the Leopards finding a lot of space out by their wide receivers. Stops the clock. They're going deep. That one possibly could have been picked off by Kevin Malone, but it is dropped. Does stop the clock for the Leopards. Wasn't sure whether Naheem Thomas was going to catch that football or not. The 6'2", 132-pound sophomore. Two wide receivers at the top of your screen almost running identical routes. So you weren't sure. All right, there's the tip. You see you threw it to the inside wide receiver, K.J. Washington, and it is incomplete there. It does stop the clock with 48 seconds remaining. Second down and 10, plenty of time for the Leopards to go ahead and continue to get out of bounds and work their two-minute offense. Saw the arm of Talden right there as he scrambles in Corey. That's our first appearance for the turf monster this season here as it scoops up Rod Talden for a loss. The brand newly installed turf here at Lab <laughs> People Stadium. We know that the turf monster does exist, but again, this turf looks fabulous here. As you can see, the colors popping on your screens, whether you're at home or watching it online, is now it's a third down and 15 to go. Talden scrambling, goes up the middle, trying to make something happen. As he is clipped up by Viger, he's going to be short. Clock's still running, and Ray Nelson burned that last time out. That's why he kept it in his back pocket. Seven seconds left, and it's going to be fourth down. And we'll say what about four or five coming up here for Matty T. Blunt. Touchdown saving tackle by Devin Whitson, the six foot, 185 pound sophomore, just able to get enough of the shoelaces and the Nikes that are on the feet of the quarterback there. And if he doesn't make that side swipe of his feet, he goes ahead and he has a lot more green in front of him. But now you're looking at seven seconds. You could possibly, on third and 15, get two plays away here, right. depending on how deep you want to run your routes as wide receivers. So an outstanding timeout here by Coach Nelson as they talk strategy. Do you want two for one, or do you want to go ahead and throw that jump ball with one play into the end zone? Again, you're at the 29-yard line of the Wolfpack, so I think you can go two for one right here. but. Look, we'll see what they decide to run. You definitely want to try the two for one because Blunt's going to get the ball back in the second half. So if you can get some points here, that gives you an opportunity to gain possession when you come back out of halftime, go in the locker room and get your kids a bit motivated, give them a pep talk. Give them, I mean, they know what's going on. It's the battle of Pritchard. You can just throw the records out the window book, even though Viger leads the overall series 37 to 14. This is the 51st, I'm sorry, 52nd meeting of these two schools. Trip receivers to the near side. It looks like it may be jump ball time here coming up for Matty T. Blunt. Calden throws it up. Stay Receiver cannot get out of bounds. And that's going to pretty much eat that clock up, Corey. For some reason, the clock had stopped because it was a first down. They have to move the chains, and that's officially what it is. But the ball is put right in play with one second, even if you spike it. That's only one second. We're yeah, at halftime. I don't so know if that's enough time. That's it not going to. That's not going to do it. It's tall and try, but he could not. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have mattered if you had two. You're able to go ahead and save it. But we're at halftime here, Al. So we're going to go to halftime with Viger on top, 20 to nothing. 
I believe Kimberly Dunn may be trying to get a hold of Coach Marcus Cook before we get to halftime. I see her flagging him down in a very impressive first half shown by Viger tonight, Corey. Absolutely. When you look at the gambles that they've been able to go with on fourth down and be able to convert, that's what got them on the board initially. Fourth and five, Jerry and Graham is right. able to score that touchdown on that long pass. And then again, you're able to sustain yardage on fourth down as well. Let's check in with Kimberly Dunn, who's with Marcus Cook. Coach Cook, you started this competition with an explosive play, um, getting the first score in the first two minutes of the game. Do you feel like that has really helped your team maintain its momentum so far? Uh, that was the goal. We wanted to get the ball, go down, score first, you know, establish some momentum, and then we know we could keep it from there. But the game's not over. It's just halftime. 20 nothing game. They, it, they can come back. So we're going to look at it as the score is 0-0, and we're going to go from there. Are there any adjustments you're going to make during this halftime to help your team maintain that win? We have to stay focused. We can't get too high. We can't get too low. We got to keep playing Viagra football. Uh, they're trying to spread us out, trying to go screens here and there. So defensively, we got to stay home. They're going to try to do some trick plays. Offensively, we got to continue to run the ball. Until they stop it, we're going to continue to run the ball, take some shots on them, eliminate penalties. We should have 40 points on the board right now if it wasn't for penalties. So we have to eliminate penalties. So that's what I'm going to harp on my team in the, in the second half, that we have to eliminate penalties and score more points. And what are you proud of so far in your team's performance tonight? I'm proud of the energy they're coming out with. They're coming out with plenty of energy. They're playing hard. So that's what we got to do. Play hard. Play hard. All right, thank you so much, Coach Cook. I'll let you get with your team. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate it. Let's take it down to the field. It's halftime. Here are the mighty marching leopards of Matty T. Blunt.
sound of the mighty marching lepers will take a break and come back and bring you Viger up next. It's halftime for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It's your time, it's your season, and you are made for more. More confidence, more style, and more bling. The Genuine Bling is here to deliver you more bling and more fashion. With new styles added daily, you can shop anytime and look fabulous. Join me, Charmaine Watson, on the $5 Frenzy every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. It's cute. It's fabulous. It's fashionable. It's $5. It's paparazzi. Halftime is still going on. It's now time for the Viger Marching Wolves to take to the field.
That's going to wrap up those halftime performances by Matty T. Blunt and Viga Corey. Always a treat to not see the student athletes, but also the, the student students, you know, ones who play in the band, too. Absolutely. The sweat equity that they put in throughout the entire summer, whether it's summer band camps, whether it's their cheerleading band camps, you, you have to love the combination when you have the student athletes that are able to be on display here for the MCPSS. None better than the Viga and Blunt bands. And, we hope that you really enjoyed those performances by both of those schools. Yeah, I saw one of my old co-workers, Nikki DeMarc, down there with Blunt. Uh, they couldn't get the mic to work, but uh, I can tell you, Nikki was not going to let you uh, party by yourself up here <laughs> tonight. Let's take a look at first half statistics uh, for this ball game. I'm going to guess, Corey, it's pretty much dominated probably by the Wolfpack. Absolutely. The line of scrimmage is the name of the game for the Viger Wolves. And they're able to dominate the line of scrimmage. You look at the rushing yardage, 152 to 13, passing yardage, 60 to 30. Total yardage, 212 to 63, as Blunt was able to close that gap in the total yardage as they were able to have an, a fairly effective drive in the two-minute drill, gaining close to half of those passing yardage. The biggest thing, though, is the penalty yardage. We knew that Coach Nelson was going to bring a very disciplined style to this Leopard program, and that's exactly what he's done. Viger, two-minute penalty, six for 38 yards, and has brought back a couple of touchdowns. But ultimately, the, what matters is the score on the scoreboard, 20-0 to zero in favor of the Wolfpack. And those penalties definitely coming at inopportune times for Viga. Both holding penalties that pulled off, in essence, 12 points off the board, six points each time. Big run by Carlos Benjamin and a pass negated as well. So uh, you, we've, we've seen Viga really explode here tonight at times. As Coach Cook said, they have almost 40 points. Well, what you want to see here is the health of Micah Dubose. Of course, we saw yeah, him right. limping off of the field in the first half. So if you look here, Jerry and Graham early in the contest was able to throw a nice touchdown pass to one of his wide receivers. And that's a huge catch for the Viger offense. And they get things going again. Look at him put his feet in the ground. Carlos Benjamin, yeah. the 5'9", 185-pound junior, has exhibited tremendous track blazing speed. And he's able to score a couple of times once he gets past the line of scrimmage. And here's a nice little textbook tackle for the Wolfpack as they're continuing to attack at the line of scrimmage as well and here's Brisker on that bootleg action it's going to go ahead and score six more points for the Wolfpack as again Viger has been in control of this contest and we'll see if they're able to continue to control the line of scrimmage here in the second half. Yeah, speaking of the line of scrimmage, that touchdown run right there by Brisker, the bootleg, went to the opposite side. The previous play, I had commented that Debo's checked out of the ball game. He got up a little slowly, came to the sideline, and they did the opposite and went to the right side and punched it right on in. Yeah, I think it's very important when you look at the defensive adjustments that need to be made for the Matty T. Blunt Leopards. You're going to have to go ahead and find a way here, opening up the second half to get your defense off of the field to find some type of three and out when Viger takes the football the first time offensively yeah. if you are blunt when you receive this football march down the field and if nothing else find a way to take time off the clock of course you need those points they're essential but at the same time find that confidence level within your offense Things have not really gone badly for them. Correct. It's just a matter of the explosive plays that Viger has been able to exhibit, and that's been the difference here in the first half of action. All right, we're going to take a break, come back on the other side. 30 seconds later, it'll be the third quarter. Don't you move. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. What's the matter, baby? You're not feeling good? School-aged children are at a higher risk of getting and spreading germs and viruses. To help protect the spread, students are encouraged to stay home when sick. Parents, it's important for your child to remain at home at least 24 hours after they no longer have a fever of 100 degrees or higher without the use of medications. Please help us maintain a healthy learning environment. We have to thank Firehouse Subs, enjoy more subs, save more lives. A portion of subs purchased at Firehouse will go to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. So visit our friend Neil Patel at the Greenlight Road Firehouse Subs location. And Corey, we got to thank them for uh, hooking us up once again on the season and uh, taking care of the crew with the Firehouse Subs. They are absolutely delicious. Absolutely. And 
you know, under new ownership, uh, Mr. Patel, he does a fine, a fine job out at that Greelot location. So make sure you patronize them as well. But at the same time, you know, you're talking about eating sandwiches by our crew. There's a big offensive line of the Wolfpack <laughs> that look like they can eat their fair share of sandwiches as well as they're trying to gobble up the Maddie T. Blunt Leopards here in the second half. And what do you expect to see here, Al, in the second half from an adjustment standpoint? Again, if you're the Leopards, if you receive this football, you want to make sure that you have a great drive and, and a sustained drive. You don't want to make sure that you go three and out because as soon as you do that, again, the scoreboard and the time of, on the clock doing you no favors at all. So scoring is of the essence. You've had an opportunity to regroup and want to see here if Duke Williams is able to find a way that. to get involved for this offense of the Maddie T. Blunt Leopards. I was thinking about that as you were talking, like how can Maddie T. Blunt get Duke Williams involved a bit more? We've seen him catch it. We've seen him run it a few times. I've been impressed with the arm of Talden doing a very good job managing the, the Leopards offense, but we know Duke Williams has what it takes. I mean, he's a back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rusher. I'm sorry, back-to-back-to-back 1,000-yard -back -back rusher, over 3,000 yards in his career, and wearing his brother's old number, number three. He switched his number. So I think uh, Matty T. Blunt definitely needs to get Duke Williams involved. Absolutely they have to get him involved, and whether it's him coming out of the backfield and catching passes or whether it's him getting past the line of scrimmage, you still have to find a way to make sure that he is an instrumental part of this offense, but you have to do it up front first. Right. That's the biggest key, getting him holes and gaps, and so far Viger has done a tremendous job stopping this running game, and that's important. Let's take it down to Kimberly Dunn. I think she's getting ready. She's going to let us know what uh, Coach Ray Nelson told her that uh, Maddie T. Blunt needs to do. So, Kim, what did you find out from Coach Nelson? Hey, guys, I was able to talk to Coach Nelson. And, you know, although they're behind a little bit, he's still very positive about the outcome of this game. He feels like that his team has so much potential. And he said all it takes is one play, one play that's going to get this team motivated, one play that is going to give them the momentum that they need to have a completely different outcome in the rest of this game. He said he's still very proud of what his team has done, but he knows that there are adjust adjustments that need to be made both offensively and defensively. He feels like his special teams are very strong, and if they're given the opportunity, they can um, have some turnaround for this team and be able to capitalize on those moments. But he said right now we've had some explosive moments. We just have not been able to capitalize on them. So we've got to take full advantage of those opportunities in order to be able to turn this game around. But he has not given up hope on his team, and he is sure that they have the potential and what it takes to come away with the win. Take a break, and we'll be back with more action headed your way for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. About to kick off the third quarter. Sorry for that long delay. We're going to check in right now with our Director of Communications for the Mobile County Public School System, Renee Phillips. She's on the sideline giving us an update. We've had quite a delay here, Renee, as we're trying to start the third quarter of action. What can you tell us right now? That's right, Al. So there was a little bit of excitement. There was a little scuffle in the stands, and some people panicked, and some people ran out of the stadium, but it was – no, there's a lot of rumors going around that are not true. Um, it is fine here. Everybody is safe. We are resuming the game, and um, we're just going to get back to it. But our, our resource officers, mobile police are all here. They assure us that things are safe enough to resume the game. That's 
that's what it appeared as if we're on the home side of the press box and we're looking the opposite field, Renee. And we can see the majority of the Viger faithful never left. They kind of remained in their seats. So that kind of assured uh, Corey and myself and our family members that on the surface, pretty much things were okay. Just some, as you said, some unnecessary activity taking part on the visiting side. That's all right. I think something happened and there were some rumors and so some people left the game, but it's safe. Um, we are all here. We have the security out. We have mobile police. We have our um, security team and um, we have ruled that it's safe to return to play the game. So that's what we're about to do. Uh, well, we are back to business because, Renee, I can barely hear you. The Viger Band is uh, handling things, so we're back on the field. So they're you head on back and do your yeah, thing. Yeah, both teams are warmed <laughs> up. They're ready. The bands are ready. The cheerleaders are ready. We're ready to resume the Battle of Pritchard. All right, Renee, we appreciate it. We're under 12 minutes right now. Thanks for the update. And, Corey, uh, as we were talking to Renee, I mean, Viger's going at it, and, and Blunt's trying to go at it right now. It's very important to get Duke Williams established here in the second half, as we were talking about it. Blunt is trying to dominate the line. Matty T. Blunt trying to dominate the line of scrimmage here as they put the first half in their rearview mirror. Right. And now have to focus here in the third quarter on moving forward. And so far here to start the second half of action, they received the football on a short field. Correct. And now because of it, they have the ball first and 10 right around the Wolfpack 27 yard line and this is probably one of the best offensive drives that we've seen out of the Leopards so far and not definitely going three and out it's exactly what their offensive coordinator A.J. Johnson needed. One of the Lang brothers coming up a bit gippy right there coming off the sideline Ja Lang Blunt running so much tempo, we haven't been able to get to chance to revisit your checklist, so we'll try to do that if we can get it in between one of these plays. Second down here for the Leopards, and they continue with a pound up the middle right there. Duke Williams with another carry. I will say this, Al. All it takes is a small sliver, a small crack to get Duke Williams, and you'll start to see him in action. But this is a critical down in series for the Leopards here as Duke Williams has the football again. And it looks like it's going to bring up a critical fourth down. It will. It will here as he is pushed back behind the line of scrimmage. Decision time coming up here for Ray Nelson. And it shouldn't be a decision too long to think about. You're down 20 points trying to get the momentum and get your Leopards back in the ball game. So we're going to call it fourth down and about three yards to go here for the Leopards. Here it is for... Matty T. Blunt, they wanted to try to draw Viger off sides. Viger being very disciplined. They're going to bring the house here against Roderick Towden, so we'll see if he's able to find one of these wide receivers here in space. Play clock under five seconds, a low snap to Towden, and it appears as if Ray Nelson came out on the sidelines for a timeout. So since we have a timeout, Cora, let's get up your checklist and revisit it and see if uh, either these teams did what they needed to do tonight so far. For Viger, they needed to lay the Leopards down from a physicality standpoint, and that's exactly what we were able to see at the line of scrimmage. They needed to eliminate turnovers. They have not turned the football over. They also had to show speed in space. We were actually able to see that excitement of Carlos Benjamin in the arm of Jerry and Graham. So Viger has done all the things they needed to do in the first half. For Blunt, special teams and tempo. Of course, special teams has not been a factor for the Blunt Leopards yet. Tempo has been a factor that Coach Nelson has preached all season long. Also, when you look at you can't spot penalties, right. well, there have been quite a few penalties that have been costly to the Matty T. Blunt Leopards. And again, this is a fountain of youth for Coach Ray Nelson. This is a very young squad as you and I were preparing our depth charts and our two deep. We didn't see a lot of familiar names and faces because a lot of these guys have don't have a lot of varsity experience. So the fountain of youth here for the Matty T. Blunt Leopards on fourth and four. We'll see what they're able to come up with after this timeout. Got a big shout out to my one of my former church members from back in the day, Big Rosie, Roosevelt Patterson, checking us out tonight. Corey, he sent me his traditional go wolf hack and put the wolf on the text, too. Absolutely <laughs> love Nothing Coach right. Rosie. Five yard and penalty. Rosie Remain Patterson, such an instrumental and influential part of the history of Viger's football tradition. And you look at Viger all time, 514 wins. You look at it, state champions in 87, 88, 08, and 21. Right. 
fourth and nine coming up here after the penalty pushes the Lepers back five yards. It was actually fourth and four. So Coach Ray Nelson, they're going to have to go for it here. Too far away to kick a field goal. Play clock approaching 15 seconds. Talden looks to the sideline getting the call. He's got some time. Catches the receiver underneath in the flat, but he's going to come up short. Not enough yardage for Charles Talden to get that first down as Talden went to the lower receiver and checked down. Yards after catch. Yeah. That's fine, but again, you have to know where the sticks are in that situation, especially being fourth down. You can check down to Talden, which is exactly what happened in that situation, but he was nowhere near. He got more yardage after the catch than he did off of the initial route that and he ran. It was still short so. by a yard. And, and Coach Nelson, as hot as he's giving it to the line judge, I believe he is upset with the spot. But the ball is at the 19-yard line. I believe they were probably about a yard short, Corey. Turnover on downs, first and 10 for Viger. 9.29 remaining here in the Battle of Pritchard. And there's been a lot of excitement if you're a Viger Wolf. And again, they just want to dominate this line of scrimmage. Coach Schluck stressed that with us at halftime. He wanted to go ahead and continue to run the football. Appears as if Jerry and Graham may be back in. A flag has come in. Snap, ball start. Five yard penalty on the all start against the Wolves with pushing back five yards. As you get a shot right there on the sidelines of Coach Ray Nelson and his coaching crew. Shout out buddy Ben Thomas and Tommy Hicks and I believe Brad Lowell, athletic director for Mobile County Public School System over there on the far 10-yard line checking out the action tonight. First and 15 coming up for Viger handoff to Carlos Benjamin. And he gets it back to the line of scrimmage, plus one yard. So we'll give him six yards on the camp, on the carry. Benjamin, a tremendous, keeps his pads low and runs extremely hard and tough. And as we are going to look to see what we have as far as the offensive line, trying to see if we can see Micah Dubose. Right, I was just looking at that as well. For I don't offensive see him. Line. And when you're up 20 to zero, in a non-region contest, sometimes you don't have to see him. Quick out right there for Viger. They're trying to move that ball in space. Dylan Jackson, they tried to get the screen set up for him. I believe he may have picked up a yard. Taking a third down and long coming up here for the Wolfpack. Ironically, Graham started the game for Viger on the first series through a Touchdown pass, 25 yards on a fourth and five. And then this is his second time back, Corey, leading the offense as we start the third quarter. Brisker pretty much handled the rest of the first half for the Wolfpack. No rush here at all as they're going to snap the ball with about, about five seconds remaining on the play clock. Graham on the move. He has the speed. The line to make was the 29. He's going to be close on that scramble. Let's see where they spot this at. It's going to really be close. Let's see if he extended the football at all, but they're definitely going to have to stop the clock to move the chains. And no, they're not moving them, Corey. They're moving them because they're going to give them the first down. Yeah, they're moving the chains. They are moving them that way. They're not coming out to measure. So a pickup right there by the South Alabama commit, Jerry and Graham. You can see the athleticism he possesses as, as an athlete. Played wide receiver tonight. So far played quarterback as well. So first and 10 at the 29-yard line for the Wolfpack. You're just going to be content with continuing to run the football. Ball security is what's going to be important for Viger, as I mentioned on my checklist to eliminate turnovers. So far, I cannot recall the ball hitting the turf at all for the Wolfpack and their runners, as, again, with all the heat and humidity, cramping definitely becomes an issue as we come along. Speaking of the turf right there, on the turf, Ja'Cory Barnes, they're going to take a look at him. So. We'll have an injury timeout. We'll be back, and hopefully he'll be doing well. High school students, are you looking for a way to become a better leader? Then the Junior Officers Training Corps may be what you're seeking. 
If you would like to develop self-reliance, learn ways to be more responsible, and improve your communication skills, you can do that and more when you register for the Junior Officers Training Corps. The JROTC program is available to all high school students in Mobile County. JROTC, we build a better you. Thank you. You're welcome. Ava, hi. Oh, hi, Sierra. How are you? Good. How are things? Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools, and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. Just the overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh, wow, that sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. Did you know that missing two days of school per month has a negative effect on student achievement and that chronic absenteeism is negatively impacting one out of every 10 Alabama students? Studies show students who are chronically absent are more likely to drop out of school. For every one day your child is absent from school, it takes three days for them to catch up. So if I am not sick, make sure I'm at school because missing school means missing out. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Got to thank our folks over there at Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs and save more lives. A portion of subs purchased at Firehouse will go to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. So visit our friend Neil Patel at the Greelot Road Firehouse Subs location. Got to thank them for what they're doing for us this season for the Mobile County Public School System High School Game of the Week. Ja'Cory Barnes had to be helped off of the sideline. I thought it was a cramp at first, Corey, but it looks as if he may have been injured. So hopefully the young man be doing fine. And coming right in on cue, Carlos Benjamin with a big run as he gets into Leopard's territory. Benjamin has well over 100 yards rushing tonight with ease. And when you look at him being able to get past the line of scrimmage and the gaping hole that was open on the right side of that offensive line, Great job by Kentrell Marks and Nicholas Poe opening up the right side of that line for their running back. First and 10 on the Leopards 47 yard line. Look at Benjamin plant that foot and extend and possibly picks up another first down. If not, he is quite close. His change of direction is elite. When you are looking for a quick change of direction back, change of speed back, Carlos Benjamin can easily plant and change direction so quickly. And we saw that earlier as he made one plant and took it to the house, and we do have an injured leopard on the field. Does look like a leopard, so we'll take another injury timeout right here. Viger on top, 20 to nothing for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Hey Alexa, tell me about Mobile County Public Schools. With 53,000 students in 90 schools, Mobile County Public Schools equips and empowers college and career-ready graduates. Several MCPSS schools are ranked among Alabama's top 10. Yearly, graduating students earned about $110 million in college scholarships and 10,000 career credentials. MCPSS is learning today, leading tomorrow. Does that answer your question? There's a lot to like about Mobile County Public Schools. What I enjoy about Mobile County School is the extra attention my teachers give us to help us learn. Teachers are liking their access to technology, and students are liking the quality of their education. I like the technology that's been incorporated into my education. And since 1826, you have trusted us to prepare your child for their future, and we like that. Mobile County Public Schools. We are learning today, leading tomorrow. It is the Battle of Pritchard, Al Wheaton, Corolla Bounty on the sidelines, Kimberly Dunn. Weather possibly could be having an effect with the heat here we have tonight, Corey, as players are being going down with injuries, and hopefully they're going to be okay for the rest of the season. But we know it has been hot. We had a delay, and we saw a lot of the players needing to be fanned and kind of cool off with that long delay we had coming out of halftime. Well, the great thing about Viger is they are a deep squad, meaning that 
second and third string guys have an opportunity to make a difference. And Kevin Malone is part of that three-headed running back monster right. that Coach Marcus Cook can present. But it all starts up front. You're not going to be able to have a successful rushing game if the big uglies up front aren't doing their job. Third down and short coming up here for Viger. Up the middle goes Graham. He's going to get the first down near the 30-yard line. Just kind of took it up the gut. Didn't see any receivers and used his legs to pick up that first down to keep this drive going as we approach six minutes in the third quarter. Getting ready and close to our third quarter heat timeout here as under six. We do witness it. You see Graham surveying the field, decides to tuck it and run. Ball security, very important. You probably would like to see him slide there instead of kind of put on the brakes and fall backwards. But at the same time here within this window, they may go ahead and decide to observe the heat timeout anyway. I believe this after this, since they got the first down at 630, this could be our heat timeout. But as we said in the first half, the officials do have the discretion to call an additional one based on the conditions and what is going on. So. That possibly could be the case right now. So at 6.30, we have a stoppage in play with Viger on top 20 to nothing. And the Wolfpack, they have been, been in control pretty much the entire time. Tonight, the last time the Leopards had back-to-back -back losing season was 2005 and 2006. Their coach at the time was Ben Harris. So I know that's something that they are not trying to repeat once again. So it's going to be first and 10, ball at the 31-yard line of Blunt. First down for the Viger Wolves. Graham still at the quarterback hill for this possession. Hand off to Kevin Malone as a flag comes in after the run by Malone. Good job making something out of nothing there. And it would have been good enough for close to perfect yardage there, but it looks like it's gonna be a late penalty flag called against the Wolfpack at the end of that run. Our crew has definitely been working tonight, Corey, officiating this contest. As our whitehead makes the call. Clock in the back. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Replay first down. So we'll get a replay as Paul Brooks leads the crew tonight, backed up by Chad Burns and Otis Mays, Claude Moffitt, David Powell, Anthony Rabb, and George Washington. They have definitely been working tonight. Pushes the Wolfpack back to the 40. So it's going to be first and 20 coming up here for the Viga Wolves. And speaking of coming up, Corey, our Game of the week, Brain Buster. We'll be dropping that question coming up pretty soon, so make sure you stick around for that. we got to start the year off, Core. I love the Brain Buster as long as we go multiple choice. <laughs> and, of course, you guys can chime in and help me out as well at home. Graham has time. He scrambles and scrambles right into a sack for a big loss. 15-yard loss going to put Viger back at their own 45-yard line. And yes, that's a huge play for the Blunt Leopards. They're able to go ahead and hold them to this loss. But I was able to spot Micah DuBose on the sidelines, Al. He does not have his shoulder pads on. He is still on the sidelines. And, you know, when you don't have your shoulder pads on, that ultimately means you know that, that means. you are done for the night. Right. And, of course, we saw him come off the field a little gimpy in his ankle. But Viger with a huge opportunity here to be an All-American candidate, and you want him to be healthy moving forward into the region play. You really do. Kevin Malone takes the carry right there. Gets it across the 50-yard line. Third down and long coming up here for the Wolves. We'll call it third and 32.
Graham back to pass. He has a lot of room up the middle, and he does take it. Just barreling his way, trying to get to the original line of scrimmage, but he's going to come up short. The one thing that Viger did do with this possession, Corey, is they went backwards. They have used up a lot of clock. This is their first possession in the second half. Blunt has only had the ball one time, and we're approaching four minutes here. Yeah, it's critical when you look at the time of possession. Zamarcus Hunter with the stop for the Blunt Leopards, but now here it is. You're looking at after that penalty flag, fourth and 16. Coach Cook says, look, I'm going to – call out Kelvin Brisker. We're going to go for it because we are in leopard territory here. Five receivers trip to the top. Brisker in. Tries to take off, but he is tripped up and tackled by the leopard. Demetrius Wilson, 6'1", 250 pound sophomore, makes the trip up stop for the Matty T. Blunt Leopards, and that's a big time stop. If you're looking at a situation now for Blunt to try to go ahead and have a sustained drive right. as we're winding down the third quarter. Viger started that drive in their own 19-yard line, and it ends on Blunt's 37. And, Cora, we're under four minutes. They didn't get the points, but they definitely used the clock to their possession. That's what you have to do. You have to go ahead and chew away the clock, again, it being your ally, being up 20-0 to zero over the Matty T. Blunt Leopards, and again, Duke Williams has really have to show up here as he, there's a low snap. Al. Low He's snap to Talden. And that kind of busts the play up right there. Talden had to get that ball and jump on it before Viger could possibly take over the fumble. We've had no turnovers tonight, no interceptions, no fumbles by both teams. So it's going to be about a one-yard loss for the Leopards. We'll call it second and 11. Duke Williams in the backfield just to the right of Talden. I, I just want to see him bust one big one, whether it's a, a huge explosive play is what you want out of Duke Williams. And given the opportunity, you know he's going to pop a big one because right. we've seen it for the last three years, him be so successful in his rushing, not only attempts, but his yardage as well. Incomplete pass from Talden to Talden. And just like that, Corey, it is third down already. And this is something you talked about. Blunt cannot afford to go three and outs down 20 points in, the, in this situation. You have to have sustained drives. It allows your defense to rest and your offense to go ahead and have some confidence. Talden on the move, going to the far side near the Blunt sideline. It just goes out of bounds, actually forced out of bounds by the Wolfpack. So it'll be fourth down here and definitely a time that Blunt's going to have to punt this ball over. So the Viger defense held. That's what you wanted it to do. I mean, if you're Viger, you say, look, we don't want you to score in this epic battle of Pritchard. And you mentioned the ability to be shut out the last time that that's happened within this rivalry especially. So a lot of pride on the line. It is. Going for it here on fourth down. I don't think we'll see a quick kick. And not punting. They're going to go for it. Talden throws. Pass is complete. First down past the 50-yard line goes Charles Talden into Viger territory, and he is pumped up with the pass from Talden to Talden. That's the little spark that the Leopards need. You look Talden looking down at a great out route being run. You have to eye the ball in, and Charles Talden is able to do that. The 6'1", 175-pound senior with a big-time catch that moves the sticks and allows them to keep this offensive drive alive. They hand it off to Duke Williams. He kind of takes a hop, skip, and a jump for about two or three yards. We'll give him credit for two. Second down coming up here for the Leopards. One of their linemen getting up a bit slow. And another lineman getting up slow as well. Yeah, that's not what you want to see if you're the <laughs> offensive line or the quarterback or Duke Williams, knowing that I'm relying on these guys who are getting up fairly slowly. And Coach Ray Nelson mentioned one of his signatures is tempo. You can't yes. have great tempo when your 285-pound linemen are getting up very slowly. Play clock under five seconds. The snap goes off. They set up the screen. They gain maybe one or two as they screen that pass out to the receiver. K.J. Washington. 
And there's a look at our superintendent for the Mobile County Public School System, Mr. Cresso Threadgill, also assisted by Jerome Woods, the principal there, and Dr. Reginald Crenshaw. They're throwing their hands up, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. I think they know the cameras are on there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Pass over the middle and tip. And that may have been a smart move right there for Washington to knock that ball down. He was surrounded by three Viger Wolves. Well, in that situation, you were going to take the loss, but we just saw it moments ago. You're looking at it already. If you are Maddie T, what you have to do here on fourth down to keep this drive alive, because it's already fourth down once again. Right. You have to find a way to sustain this drive here with 126 remaining in the third quarter, trailing 20 to zero. Tauled into Tauden on the last fourth down conversion. Fourth and six, Rod Tauden rolls out to his right. Wide open on the wheel route. Oh my goodness, he put a little too much juice on it. Duke Williams isn't that tall, Corey, to bring it in. He did everything he could mm. to readjust to this football. Just a little bit too much underneath it as he yep. aired it out too far for the stretched out Duke Williams. And if Duke Williams is able to adjust and make that catch and keep his balance, he's definitely going to have six points. But nonetheless, a turnover on downs, first and ten Wolfpack, and they'll be taking over at their own 36-yard line. Their second possession of the ball game here. I'm sorry, second possession of the third quarter. Quick hand off to Carlos Benjamin as he gets tied up with one of his blockers, tackled for about a two-yard loss on the play. Corey, I'm not one to, to be negative Nancy about it, but I don't know if it, if it was the heat. Uh, the weather can have an effect on the ball like that. But you, I mean, Williams was wide open and Talden just missed him. That would have been a big play to convert right there That's those, for the Leopards. When you go back and you look at those in film study, you, you absolutely just pound the table and get mad yeah. at yourself. Yeah. But you learn from it, and you make that throw and complete that next week in their next contest. Got to. Second and 11 coming up here for the Viger Wolves as we're approaching the end of the third quarter. Carlos Benjamin trying to work himself out of a hole, and the Leopards won't allow it. Nice tackle and wrapped up right there by Matty T. Blunt to bring him down. Third Lazare, down, but a flag on the play. Lazare Johnson, six foot, 167 pound junior, has been tremendously busy for the Leopards tonight, and that penalty is gonna be called against the Wolf Pack, and it's gonna negate any type of positive yardage that was gained. Possibly a block in the back. You can see our Whitehead talking with Jamari Barnes as he kinda put the hands out right there. During the run, holding. Penalty is declined. So not a box in the back, but a hold. Second time tonight that Blunt has declined the penalty, so it's going to be third and about 15, maybe 16 yards coming up for Viger. Kelvin Brisker still in the ball game. They're trying to set up a quick delayed screen. And they complete it past the 50-yard line goes Garrett Holcomb, one of those members of the 4x100 relay team. And you saw him turn on the afterburners, score. <laughs> Holcomb already having a touchdown earlier this evening was trying to make his second house call. And you see him burst down the sidelines. Great check by Brisker and good job of the offensive lineman getting out in front and creating that extra run after catch ability for his wide receiver and Holcomb definitely knew what to do with it and we're approaching the end of the third quarter. First and 10, ball on the 47 yard line of the Leopards. Hand off to Carlos Benjamin. He has really been toting the rock a lot tonight for Viger and that will take us to the end of the third quarter. And you know what that means, Corey, we're gonna get up we're going to check in with Kimberly Dunn, get an injury update, then we'll give you our game of the week, Brain Buster. And I see zeros on the clock. Kim, what can you tell us about the injuries on the sideline there? 
I was able to check on Michael Dubose, number five for Viger, and he is actually not going to be returning for the remainder of the game. He actually sustained a knee injury, so they're going to be monitoring him, trying to get him healthy again so that he can return in games later in the season, but we will not be seeing an appearance for him from him for the rest of the game. Thank you, Kim. We appreciate that. Number five is Ja'Cory Barnes, and we did see he was assisted off of the field, so that possibly could be the situation, unfortunate for the young man. Hopefully everything's going to work out. So, Corey, we're at the end of the third quarter. I believe now we're ready to get up our game of the week brain buster, our first one of the season. So we'll get the question up there for you to get an idea. All right, Corey LeBounty, here we go. Time to start the season off. In the 2000s, how many times have Blunt and Viger missed the playoffs in the same season? Corey, this one is not a multiple choice. So no, this is, no, no, no. It's not a multiple, multiple choice. choice. No, no. In the 2000s. In the 2000s now. Wow, how absolutely. many times have Blunt and Viger missed the playoffs in the same season? So ponder, think about it. No, we won't let you call a friend, but we know you are watching the game on other various means. So sure. <laughs> folks might chime in. Y'all want to help out Corley Bounty, help him out. But uh, stick around. We'll give you the answer later on. We'll reveal it with our game of the week, Brain Buster answer. We appreciate the folks coming out tonight and sticking with us here at Lab Peoples Memorial Stadium. Al Weed and Coralie Bounty, Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines, our statistician China Powell putting in good work. Pretty soon we'll probably have some statistics to share with you from the third quarter, so stick around for that. But right now, sticking around, Viger in control, 20 to nothing. Corey, this is the only quarter so far tonight. We didn't have a score in the third quarter. We had a score in the first, score in the second, but none in the third. And we'll see here if the Wolfpack continue to make this drive stay alive as you're getting some good experience here by Brisker airing Brisker it rolls out. rolls out, airs it out, incomplete. It was knocked down as he was trying to connect with his receiver way downfield. Looks like that receiver is trying to get with DeAndre Chambers. And they're going to be a penalty flag on the play. It looks like it's ineligible down the field as it's going to cost the Wolfpack some yardage. Mm. That will be our first call of that tonight. During the past, we had ineligible downfield on the offense. That penalty has declined. Third down. One of the big fellas kind of leaked out a bit too far, Cor. Yeah, and, and when you look now at where it's going to put the sticks, you go now to third down and eight yards to go from the 45-yard lines of the Leopards. Brisker under center right now. They hand off to Benjamin, and he is wrapped up immediately right at the line of scrimmage. That's going to take it a fourth down, Corey. Yeah, fourth down is where the Wolfpack have had a lot of success, Al, and we'll see here if the Wolfpack decide to go ahead and punt this football away as you see many shuffling in and out of the game at this point in time. I think that what you're also going to see here is Viagra willing to flip the field and, and gain positive field position. Kelvin Brisker back to punt. Blunt does not have a return man set up right now. So I don't know if this is a different type of special team strategy coming from the Leopards and coming in late. Now it appears as if someone's running on the field, but a timeout has been called by Viger. And that's a good timeout. You're about to get a delay a game call, which would have given your kicker five additional yards to work with. But if you're Viger, what you're really starting to focus on here as we begin the fourth quarter of play is knowing that you must stay in shape and healthy for next week's contest. So Marcus Cook burns his first timeout in the second half. Got to thank Firehouse Subs for supplying us with the good eats tonight and for the season. Enjoy more subs, save more lives. A portion of subs purchased at Firehouse will go to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. So visit our friend Neil Patel at the Greelight Road Firehouse Subs location. Let's take a look at statistics through three quarters. 
So far tonight, as you can see, total domination by the Wolfpack, Corey, putting up 338 total yards so far. And look at the amount on the ground, 277. That's what you're going to do. You're going to run behind the huge offensive line. No turnovers by either team as well. Passing yards, 61 yards through the air for the Wolfpack tonight. So a very interesting ball game through three quarters as we're into the fourth quarter here. And the heat is definitely here at last stadium. But I have to commend the fans who are sticking around on both sides to enjoy this battle of Pritchard. A lot of kids on the Viger side, Corey, we talked about them. They have 18 returning starters, 10 on offense, eight on defense. And a lot of these players are committed already. Jerry and Graham committed to South Alabama. Micah DeBose to Georgia. Brandon Pierford to Mississippi Valley. Ja'Cory Barnes to Jackson State. So the Wolfpack, they're loaded. They're, they're ready for some action this season. 18 out of your 22. Yeah, that's a Can't lot. Can't beat that. Stoppage in play. Looks like a Wolf was coming on the field late. I don't know if they had to burn a timeout or not. Possibly a delay of game. That's the call, so that's going to push Viger back five yards. That shouldn't happen coming out of a timeout. That shouldn't. That, that's, a, that's a deal breaker right there, Corey. I'm sure they're going to hear about that from Coach Cook when they review this film as they go into practice. So they're getting the formation together. Brisker's first punt of the night. Fair catch signal. That's a live ball. You can't advance it. You cannot you advance cannot it. Cannot advance it. But a muffed punt. And Corey, I don't know if that was Duke Williams back returning it or not. It was Duke Williams. I thought I saw him on the field. The fair catch. He's not listed as one of our punt returners. As I was looking for the numbers. But take a look at the, the replay here. He called, he signaled for the fair catch, just didn't bring it in. And just misjudged it, part of those Friday night lights and, and Vigers brand and who's, for it. Who is Johnny on the spot, Corey? One of your threaded faster impact players, Brandon Purifoy, recovered. That's our first turnover of the night. And when you see the fact that when you're threaded faster impact players, are finding a way not only defensively but on special teams. It reminds me a lot of Nick Saban at Alabama. You have your best players on the field right. playing special teams as well. Purifoy, one of those guys that he's just a baller. And I know if he decides to go ahead and sign with Mississippi Valley State, the only knack is, knock has been about he's undersized. But, folks, I don't think his size matters. Just ask the NCAA's all-time leading tackler, Carlton Marshall, Find who's out, also right. undersized. Correct. Purifoy has that same type of thump and that same type of heart to where wherever he decides to go, you're getting a winner. Definitely he's going to do that. Our first turnover of the night. And it's just like an explosive play. I mean, it's just like a continuation of Brisker being able to keep it down or you're having a big run by Carlos Benjamin because you're putting that explosive offense right back on the field. And here it is when they take over the time of possession, we'll see if they're able to milk the clock away or go ahead and add points to that scoreboard. Nice run right there as Viger continues to pound, ground and pound Demetrius Johnson with the run for the Wolfpack. Now you've gone and you've had about four or five running backs to touch the football, whether it's a quarterback keeper or whether it's that three-headed monster that has been created by the offensive line of Marcus Cook. And again, another freshman running back for the Wolfpack. He's coming in and he's fresh. Yes. So we'll see if he's able to take one to the house. Trip receivers to the top, continuing to keep the ball on the ground. That's something Marcus Cook has done a lot tonight, and you saw it in the statistics throughout the ball game, over 200 yards on the ground for the Viger Wolves. And they didn't just start this, like, last quarter. They, they started that in the first quarter, Corey, running Absolutely. the ball. Absolutely, and another threaded faster impact player making the tackle on the play, Chase Howard, 6'2", 235-pound junior making that tackle for Matty T. Blunt. 
fourth down and three coming up here for the Wolfpack. Play clock under five seconds. And they're just going to, I don't know if Coach Cook called a timeout. He was near the officials. And they are going to grant the timeout. The play clock had already expired. So while we have a break, let's put up that game of the week brain buster question. We've allowed you some time to think about it, Corey. So we'll get the question put up. In the 2000s, how many times have Blunt and Viger missed the playoffs in the same season? Keep in mind, this is year 2023. So you're talking about 22 years, basically. It's not a large number. I'm going to go with the number Uno. One time. All right, we'll have the answer revealed. Miss Diana hit her a special little button. Three times, Corey, in the year 2000, 2005, and last year, because Blunt and Viger did not make the playoffs. That was my Uno. That was my Uno, <laughs> 2022. 2000 and 2005, I definitely did not recall, but I definitely recall it last season as both of these teams we're looking Viger coming off a five and four season and Blunt coming off a three and seven season. So I, I knew that it was definitely one, but when you look at 22 years of football and only three, three times years. within well, both, both of the schools, schools didn't make the playoffs. That speaks of the history and the tradition Correct. and the winning programs that are Blunt and Viger both. Fourth down as they get it out to Garrett Holcomb. He's trying, he's stretching. I don't know, he's gonna be close, Corey. Let's see where the mark is, where they spotted it. And from where the, the near official right here, it appears if he has enough, and he does, the chains move. So the Wolves capitalize and get that first down. Last year, Viger shut out Blunt seven to nothing. And I did some uh, digging and some research if they hold the Leopards scoreless tonight, this will be the 11th shutout in the series that Viger has over Blunt. And that's not counting a shutout playoff win that happened here at Lab People Stadium, Corey. Yeah, and, and I know we had Willie Anderson on earlier. Right. Speaking about the last time this game to him was for him that was played here in Lab People Stadium, one in which Blunt defeated Viger. But it's always great to see the former stars grace the sidelines because there's been so many former NFL players and NFL greats that started their prep career here at Blunt and Viger and are really flagship institutions throughout the state. And went on to play great careers. We have a graphic ready. We'll try to get that up later on. I believe that ball was able to get through, and that is a touchdown, eight-yard touchdown. Michael Leland hauls it in from Kelvin Brisker, and the Wolves score again. 6'2", 160-pound sophomore getting on the board for the Wolfpack. Great job of rolling out. You see the patience. Brisker felt no pressure, decided to roll right, and his big wide receiver is able to scoop that up is a great job of the replay crew there and want to wish one of our replay gurus a very happy birthday uh oh this not, evening not not charles 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 is in Martin. the truck okay and we appreciate charles's great work on the replay and want to wish him a very happy birthday this evening we'll take a break viger in control 26 to nothing over Maddie T. Blunt. school is um, probably one of the best ones I could have picked in Mobile. She's in the PACE program. The teachers are phenomenal. The principal, I uh, couldn't ask for a better principal. The research that I had done myself, I believe the quality of education in Mobile County public school system is excellent. For me and my child, 
I'm going to stick with the public school system. I think it's the way to go. At Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. Hello, I'm Jordan Clark, and I'm in the Health Service Academy at John L. LaFleur Magnet High School. My future career is to be an obstetrician gynecologist. With this academy, I'm learning firsthand from people already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job really makes me want to study hard and work harder towards my career goals. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. Visit mcpss.com. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Liger all in control. 26 to nothing over the Matty T. Blunt Leopards. A little short kick up the middle taken by one of the up guys as they approach near the midfield stripe. Corey, you were talking about the impact and, and the players that move on to the next level and, and the level after that. And our buddy Wade Ford directing the truck, he put together a graphic of all the players from these two schools who have went on to play in the NFL. And just look at the names and the familiarity. Damian Craig, Carl Poe, Kadarius Tony, Super Bowl champ, Sherman Williams, Super Bowl champ for Blunt, Robert Brazil, Pro Football Hall of Famer. Just so many over the years from both of these programs, and they shared nine state championships between the both of them. Man, you, you just need to go ahead and send this one graphic out to the rest of America because <laughs> when you do that and you do have NFL Hall of Famers and future NFL Hall of Famers right. and guys who are continuing to produce not only in the high school level but at the collegiate level as well for both of these fine schools that are very well represented on that list, you're not going to find a better list as far right. as growing up here. Jim Nagy, the executive director of Reese's Senior Bowl, say the draft starts here. Right. Well, literally, when you look at that list, you know the draft and why the draft starts here in Mobile, Alabama. The tremendous high school talent, especially from Blunt and Viger, year after year, you have to love it. And we've had the privilege to watch one of these particular guys since the freshman, Micah DeBose, the way he's playing and continuing to grow, as we know, he's an All-American right now, committed to Georgia, going to be possibly working with Willie Anderson, who we interviewed earlier. And Coach Cook told us that he feels he has a chance to be one of the best ever to come through Viger. If he stays focused, plays hard, don't take plays off, Coach Cook feels he has a strong chance to win Mr. Football. The sky's the limit for this kid, and, and he told us, Corey, he could see this kid playing on Sunday easily. And I will say this as well. I, earlier today, I was watching a little bit of Mercer and North Alabama. Well, when you watch North Alabama, there's a former Viger High School player and assistant coach who right. is now the head coach at North Alabama, and Brent Dearman. Brent Dearman. And it was great to see Coach Brent Dearman take the North Alabama team to a national spotlight on ESPN today. And, but you also saw a guy who played in this game last year, That's Michael correct. Towner Jr. Truck, sure Truck, did. who was one of our impact players to watch for in this game a year ago. You saw him on television today as well playing for North Alabama. Deshaun Davis, one of the former Viagra greats. That's right. Also on the coaching staff of Brent Dearman. So, again, no matter where you're looking, whether it's in the collegiate game or the NFL, you'll see former Blunt and Viagra greats representing the city of Pritchard. Alden on the run, picks up a couple of yards, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. But that is not going to be enough. It's going to force Blunt to a fourth down and a possible punting situation, something we've seen too many times tonight for the Leopards as Coach Ray Nelson in his debut for the Leopards. Not starting off on the on the good foot there, if you want to call it. Corey, as we're under six minutes, I believe we're going to have our heat timeout. Who are you thinking about for the Career Tech Education player of the ball game? But hold on to that thought. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. It's your time, it's your season, and you are made for more. More confidence, more style, and more bling. 
The Genuine Bling is here to deliver you more bling and more fashion. With new styles added daily, you can shop anytime and look fabulous. Join me, Charmaine Watson, on the $5 Frenzy every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. It's cute. It's fabulous. It's fashionable. It's $5. It's paparazzi. Coming to you live from Lad People Stadium. It is Al Weed and Coralie Bounty alongside Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines giving you the Battle of Pritchard. And Viger has been all in control tonight on top 26 to nothing. And Core, before we were heading into the break, I was about to ask you, who are you thinking about as a possible career tech education player of the game for tonight? I think that Carlos Benjamin has had an outstanding contest. Yes. You also look, Kelvin Brisker. Two touchdowns. Has played solid football from the quarterback position. Jerry and Graham was very effective, had a few catches, threw a touchdown pass. And you look at defensively always, Brandon oh Purifoy is always a difference maker as well. He's so been all over the field and recovered the one turnover tonight on the muff punt by, by Blunt. Second down for the Wolfpack. And we have another penalty, delay of game on Viger as they brought in another quarterback, Drayden Jones. He's a junior, 6'3", 175. So, Corey, we have seen the entire artillery of quarterbacks tonight for the Viger Wolves, starting with Jerry and Graham to Kelvin Brisker, now to Drayden Jones. I think that it's important when you're able to get experience in a rivalry game such as this Blunt and Viger matchup. And Matty T. Blunt and Viger, when you look at the history of this game, to be able to say that you come in and you were effective or you got a chance to work all summer long to get an opportunity to get quality reps, still four and a half minutes remaining. That's right. For both the offense and the defense. And this is on both sides of the football because looking forward, to Viger's schedule next week. I do believe you go right into region play. They go right, they host um, BC Rain next week. So as far as looking and staying healthy, the backups that are in the game for the Wolfpack just need to make Coach Cook happy from an execution standpoint. And if you're the Matty T. Blunt Leopards, they jump right into region play and it's not gonna be any easier. Nice carry right there by the Wolfpack up to the 45-yard line of Blunt goes Demetrius Johnson, the freshman. You talked about coming in, getting good quality reps. Corey, as I dig and I dig and I dig, the last time Viger shut out Blunt back to back, you have to go back. Are you sitting down, Corey? I'm sitting down, bro. To 1989 and 1990. That was the last time. Viger shut out the Leopards in back-to-back -back seasons. 89, wow. 1989 and 1990. Those are very significant years in the history of Viger as well. Court of Bounty. Very they, impressive. They pulled off a national championship in one of those years. So. Coming off of that national championship appearance, and you look at the all-time series, Viger leading 37 to 14 all-time over Matty T. Blunt, but wow, back-to-back -back years. Back-to-back, -back last time out. they shut him out. Just, and that was back in 1990. Orenza Davis, you can see there with the Alabama A&M apparel on was coming back showing some love last yeah. year. Sure right? was. Coming home to show support of his brothers that are wearing black tonight and Viger in black that's something that you don't see a lot of too often for sure and, well coach cook told us what do you wear to a funeral <laughs> you wear, you wear black, black. <laughs> next week we're going to Davidson they're going to be hosting Hillcrest Evergreen I'm looking forward to this one because we will be helping to christen the new Warrior Stadium next week Corey so I'm excited about next week's matchup next Friday night you know with a jamboree game it's not the same type of excitement knowing that 
you'll be able to put a 1-0 and o behind it. Right. Jamboree is just for film purposes and to, to have competition. But when you're stepping right in to an opportunity to say 1-0 and o behind your schedule in your brand new stadium, you look at BC Rain debut in their stadium versus XL last night. They got the big the win. W. You look at LaFleur in the Snake Pit last night debut in their stadium. They get the W. They get the win. And right. end a 23-game losing streak. So congratulations to Renardo Jackson, who was a former state championship coach here at Viger High School. That's one of the reasons you see Coach Jackson now leading the LaFleur Rattler football program. Pass incomplete. That'll be turnover on downs to the Leopards as we're under four minutes. And I believe we may be close to revealing our career tech education player of the ball game core we've had some deliberation but I would definitely be in agreement with you if this name pops up on the screen here pretty shortly because this young man definitely definitely made himself known tonight absolutely and that's what it takes I mean it takes the ability to be successful and be explosive and we knew coming in that this Viger offense when you have a four by 100 entire relay team Correct. and sometimes you have track members that don't play football that is ver there's a very good point just there's so happens all four of these state championships all four of the guys play ball track runners <laughs> play football as well and it makes a huge difference when we try to consider our player of the game encroachment five yard penalty on the defense remains first down offsides against viger so they're going to give blunt five yards one thing we hadn't seen tonight, Corey, and I thought we would uh, from what Coach Ray Nelson told us, Rod Talden has pretty much played the entire game. We have not seen Zay Dunnigan, uh, the other quarterback. He was told that he was more of a dual threat guy. Talden was more of the pocket passer. But we have not seen Zay Dunnigan tonight, the sophomore, for the Leopards at all. Well, what you do want to see is consistency from the quarterback position. And sometimes – with Coach Nelson being a former quarterback himself, sometimes you just get a feel for what you have in practice because that's a great throw by Roderick Talden and a great catch as well from his wide receiver, Charles Talden. And Talden to Talden, Talden, Talden has been a strong target tonight for sure. Flag on the play right there at the 40-yard line as the officials discuss it. The blunt faithful have started to trickle out. But most of the Viger Wolves fans are still here, so they're going to pick up that flag. And since they're picking up the flag, let's put down the graphic right here, our career tech education player of the game, Carlos Benjamin. I would definitely agree with that. I don't know if he goes to John F. Kennedy, but he definitely goes to C.F. Viger. Boy, I could definitely say that. Definitely goes to C.F. Viger High School. Carlos Benjamin scoring a couple of touchdowns here tonight in the battle for Pritchard as we see Towden continue to be very patient in the pocket and dumping it down to one of his wide receivers in the flat. But Al. He has made an impression tonight. Absolutely he's made an impression because when we're talking to Marcus Cook and seeing them in the spring game right. against McGill Tulin, we knew that the running game was something that was going to be a huge factor for this Wolfpack program in the 2023 season. And we'll see if they're able to continue to dominate the line of scrimmage next week because that game against BC Rain is going to be personal. Talden had his guy wide open, running out on the flat there by himself. Jamarian Smith, and he could not bring in the magic bean, Corey. Couldn't squeeze it hard mm. enough, man. You know, you want to be able to squeeze the pigskin and, and get a little grease out of it. But Don't know if it was a blown coverage, but he was wide open. Well, it's something that I guarantee here with 3.13 remaining in the fourth quarter of play that Viger's coaching staff is going to make sure that they have two deep safeties to where you're not going to be able to throw over the top. Up the middle, run the Leopards as they are trying to get that goose egg off of the scoreboard. By no means do they want their arch rival to shut them out at all. Don't know if that's Mason Jackson or Frank Smith on the carry. 
Blunt has increased their numbers. They actually have double numbers, score, something we haven't seen from them in a long time. Yeah, that's a good problem have to two have eights. when you have <laughs> double numbers on the roster. That's a great problem to have if you're Coach Ray Nelson. And again, Coach Ray Nelson is going to have this Maddie T. Blunt program going in the right direction as had a chance to watch him play in the spring game. You knew that they were going to play with tempo and be very competitive, but they're trying here not to be shut out as they're knocking on the goal line with 220 remaining, Al. And here's the question now. Special teams has been a point of emphasis for Ray Nelson. Do right. you say, hey, this is definitely four down territory here, or do you want to try to attempt the field goal not to be shut out? Uh, what do you do I'm here? I'm going to say it's four down territory because okay. it appears as if Viger has put in a lot of the, the, third, the third teamers because I'm seeing a lot of numbers I have not seen tonight. So I'm having to deep, dig deep into my uh, roster here and a flag that's going to be pass interference in the end zone, probably half the distance to the goal. Ball's on the four-yard line. Well, I will say this. You, if you're Viger, you want to try to make sure that that 89-90 history holds up. If you're Blunt, you want to make sure that that 89-90 history is just mentioned it's just that, the last time, <laughs> not the most Pass recent. interference on the defense, half the distance to the goal penalty. It does not make the line to gain third down. So that's an interesting call, Corey. I thought the ball was, I'm, I'm sorry, the ball was on the 12, so half the distance does not give them enough for a first down. It looks as if they may be about a half yard short. And that is not an automatic first down penalty either. No, Towden right here is going to have an opportunity Flags to try everywhere. to get his end. But there, there, there is 152 remaining now. So, again, still plenty of time remaining at Lad People Stadium. On the scoreboard, it says four and three, but always look at the down marker on the field instead Prior of looking the at the scoreboard. We had, we had illegal substitution. 12 minutes formation on the defense. Half the distance to the goal penalty will result in a first down. First and down. unfortunately, Viger just gave them the gift they did not want to do. That 12 men penalty gives them Maddie T. Blunt first and goal here. We'll call it the two yard line. I don't see Duke Williams in the ball game. That's a nice tackle for loss right there by the Wolfpack. That was huge, Corey, by Emmanuel Gates. That was a huge tackle. Emmanuel Gates said, look, Emmanuel Gales, 5'11", 185-pound freshman, mm. middle linebacker, shoots his gap, and Gales does a tremendous job tackle for loss. Four-yard loss. Pass incomplete, Talden to Talden. He tried to go with the inside out move. Pass a bit high, third and goal coming up here. There's our buddies Ben Thomas and Tommy Hicks still sticking around here till the end, Corey. And again, it, it's been a little extended contest tonight. We <laughs> thank everyone for sticking around with us, not only Absolutely. on cable television, but on YouTube and Facebook and Roku, all the tremendous ways that you can follow MCPSS Television Network's high school football coverage on Friday and, of course, on this special Saturday night edition. Third and goal ball at the six-yard line. And I believe Coach Nelson's going to burn a timeout right here. That'll leave him with one. You have two plays to get into the end zone to avoid the shutout. And at, right now, it's definitely all about pride for the Leopards. Don't forget, next Friday, we're going to Davidson. It is going to be technically their home opener, but also their stadium opener, Corey, as one of a four new stadiums on the Mobile County Public School System. So Hillcrest Evergreen versus Davidson next Friday. We'll get all the action started at 6.50. Boy, I bet Rick Cawley is going to be grinning ear to ear, Corey. You know, I was pleased to see Rick Cawley come out here and, and support the Murphy Panthers on Thursday night, being a former head coach of Murphy, along with Ron Lee, who is the, currently the head coach at St. Luke's. So anytime you get a chance to see former coaches 
support their former schools. That's always great. But love catching up with Rick Cawley because he's just one of those good guys yeah. that, that's going to shoot it to you straight. And he's always so honest and so informative on his football team. So look forward to catching up with Coach Cawley. And we'll see what the Davidson Warriors have in store. DJ Butler. DJ Butler. We'll get a chance to see him. And the, uh, the butler will be in the house. Exactly. Third and goal here, ball at the six. Still do not see Duke Williams. Ball tipped. The tip drill is still alive. Incomplete. That was a chance for someone to come down with that one, but no luck for either side. So, Corey, we're back to square one again. It's fourth and goal. <laughs> Ball's on the five rather than the, the, the two now, and it does appear as if Ray Nelson and Lepers are going for it. I'm very surprised. I hope that Duke Williams isn't hurt, but I'm surprised he has not been in on this last series. I wouldn't put him in. I, I, it'll be a situation to where I think that you just go ahead and you rest him and you prepare him for the region contest. But do you want to get shut out or not? Here it is. All right, Blunt set. They're scrambling. Pass up by Talton. Wide open. Touchdown. And the Leopards avoid the shutout. Five-yard pass from Talton to Naheem Thomas. And Matty T. Blunt is on the board. No quit in a Ray Nelson coach team. And again, a perfectly executed throwback. And I love the route. I love the play call. A short field situation. You roll them out right. You throw back left. And what happens is the defensive gets caught looking into the backfield. And as soon as you look at that eye candy, a great job of releasing by Naheem Thomas, the 6'2", 132-pound sophomore, catching his first touchdown. And they're going to go for two. Going for two. Looks like a tackle <laughs> eligible play as one of the big uglies hauls it in for Blunt. Colby Wells, he was at media day. I hope they don't get him for excessive celebration, Corey. There are flags in the end zone. 6'5", <laughs> 329. One of the biggest people you'll see scoring a touchdown this week, and we'll see what oh the penalty goodness. flag is all about. Maybe excessive, and they'll apply it on the kickoff, but nonetheless, Colby Wells showing the soft hands. Touching on the offense, which oh, carries oh, a loss oh, of oh, down. Oh, the try for point is no good. Wow. And Wells the reason I said, typically, if you're going to be eligible, you have to announce and make yourself known as eligible, too, Corey. <laughs> so, you know, the white hat never came in and said he was eligible. So. I just love the fact that Big Fella <laughs> didn't drop the football. Kobe Wells said, look, mom open. Throw me the football. And Talton was happily. He showed, blind. he showed good hands. And showed great he hands. He showed good hands. I'll give him that. 29-pound offensive lineman. I know Willie Anderson, Stu Meat, is now watching us here on Facebook. Big Stu Meat, the big fella, the left tackle, 6'5", <laughs> 329 from Matty T. Blunt. Representing for the big ugly. <laughs> he, he's catching it. He was ineligible, but he still held on to the football. Oh and my I, I know that you had soft hands when you were playing basketball as well, Willie Anderson, and showed us those great hands that led to a phenomenal NFL and future Hall of Fame career. But you love it when the big guys get a chance to, oh, you know it, to be on TV and catch the football. You know it, Corey. So it took the Leopards almost near the end of the ball game before they got their first points. 63 seconds remain here in this battle of Pritchard. And Viger's going to go down and win back-to-back -back for the Leopards as well. Over, I'm sorry, for the uh, Viger Wolves over the Leopards. And Coach Cook, you know, he, he has to be thrilled with the performance up until the point to where Maddie T. Blunt was able to drive the field here at the end of the fourth quarter and score and erase that shutout. Now, because of the penalty now, you look at Maddie T. Blunt kicking off from the 40 yard line and we'll see here if you're in a situation Al to where do you side the on kick onside kick it I don't think you have anything to lose here by kicking an onside kick for sure Viger is ready they have a lot of the up guys up to prevent that and just like that they're going to take possession just outside the 50 yard line I believe that's where the first knee went down for the Viger Wolves 
That's four in a row, including the COVID year, if you want to call it, where Blunt had to uh, forfeit the ball game due to COVID. But back-to-back -back wins coming up for Coach Marcus Cook, Corey, in his second year as head coach of CF Viper. 2-0 and o versus two and your o. biggest crosstown rivalry. And congratulations to Coach Marcus Cook, who, again, being a graduate of Viger High School, Coach Cook definitely knows what this rivalry means. He played in it and has a chance now to have been an assistant coach and a head coach. And more importantly, he has his 2023 squad trying to achieve what the state championship team of Viger High School here within the last couple of years was able to accomplish back in 2021 when he was offensive line coach for Coach McKenzie. And again, Viger is one of those programs that's standard is making the playoffs and making a deep playoff run. Right. And last year they weren't able to accomplish that and they used that as fire in their belly this off season. And we can definitely see the difference here in the outcome because again, seven to zero was our score one year ago and lacking the offensive fireworks, but we had that quickly here as Viger scored on their first offensive possession. I will say this compared this year to last year, you could see the, the maturation of Kelvin Brisker. Uh, last year he was the quarterback during this ball game and, and the offense didn't seem to click the way it needed to go. Uh, but you could definitely see how the young man has matured. He made a big difference tonight. Jerry and Graham started him off with the first series, and then Brisker pretty much ran it the rest of the first half, came out in the third quarter, Graham got a series, and they went back to Brisker. And you see what happened as Viger gets the win tonight. 26 to six in the battle of Pritchard. Quite an interesting contest, Corey. We're gonna be getting out of here close to 1030, but you know what, we got it all in tonight. And we definitely got it in. Career Tech Education Player of the Game, Carlos Benjamin. He put on a show for us tonight. Absolutely did. He showed you the explosiveness, gave the opponent something to look at on film. You're going to have to stop the running game of Viger if you want to be successful here moving forward. You do. The physicality that Coach Cook talked about in the offseason was carried over into the night's game plan. And you look at with all the distractions throughout the offseason and even in tonight's game, both teams stayed focused. And, again, Ray Nelson, he has Matty T. Blunt on the right path. Now, yes. again, I will say that this game has produced so many champions, not only on the field but off the field. But this game and the attendance here tonight was superb, over probably 17,000 people here at Ladd People Stadium to really witness a great high school football game. And as Coach Nelson told us, these kids are young. They have a lot of numbers, and that's something that can be expected. But they have growth, and they know it's going to take to get to the next level. So I don't believe by any means it's an indication of, oh, my goodness, you know, things are going down for the Leopards. But it's just a matter of progressing and moving forward. Here are our final statistics for the night. Almost 300 yards on the ground for the Wolves. Man. Quite a number. On my checklist, showing speed and space, that's evident at the rushing yards. Also eliminating turnovers, no turnovers None. for the Wolfpack tonight. They probably want to clean up the penalties, but ultimately winning 26 to 6. That's a big time win for Marcus Cook. Again, last year shutting out the Blunt Leopards and almost having another shutout tonight. So it's a great offensive night for the Wolfpack and defensively, not too shabby either, but Ray Nelson and them jump right into region play next sure week. Do. And we'll see how they're able to respond as well. As does Viger as they'll get their home opener on campus next week as they'll be hosting BC Rain. I believe Kimberly Dunn is efforting to try to get to winning coach Marcus Cook because I know they are excited down on the sidelines right there, all the Viga Wolves fans who stuck around. And we appreciate you sticking with us as well as Corey said on Facebook, on YouTube, on Roku, or whatever means you're watching through cable. We're we appreciate you for supporting high school athletics. A very, very interesting ball game tonight. Pretty much dominated by Viger. So we Next week, don't forget, Hillcrest Evergreen versus Davidson. And we're going to go live at 650. It is literally the home opener and the stadium opener for the Warriors, Corey. I can't wait for that one next week. A lot week. of excitement generated week number one officially as this is considered week zero. Right. So we'll see the biggest improvement from week one 
into week two. For Cora Bounty, Kimberly Dunn, our statistician, China Power, executive producer, Quentin Howard, director, Wade Ford, and engineer, Fran Conway. We appreciate you joining us for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Fire, they are the Battle of Pritchard champions. Have yourself a great weekend.